I guess, Derek Warren. And we were discussing off the okay. air, what would we do for a Klondike bar? And the answer is really, really terrible, <laughs> terrible things. That's, that's, uh, that's what it is, right? But uh, Depending on the situation and maybe the day. Yes. Weekends, anything goes, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a Klondike bar. It's a Klondike yeah. bar. Actually, what we were really talking about was like I I am this is the my last string in this location in this house, um, because tomorrow this tomorrow I'm cleaning up, but uh, Sunday I'm out of here. So it's kind of one of those. It, it's a, you're my last stream in this house, man. So you got hey, and five sixty five is a nice number. Yeah, it is. it is. It is. I've done over a hundred of these now broadcast as videos now, which is wow. kind of like yeah. Yeah, Very cool. this, yeah. This is what I'm supposed to do, I think. So now, now I, I got now I got now I got to become a millionaire, zillionaire, trillionaire overnight, uh, and then yeah. that'll all happen. So, well, secret, I, secret I have to secret. say, it's an honor to be on your show. Really, I always hear great things about your show. I have to actually watch more of your episodes, but uh, I'm I'm happy you allowed me to be with you. Oh, well, dude, you could have came anytime you wanted to. You didn't do it. Ask. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty open and easy going. Like I, to be perfectly honest, I'm always humbled with some of the people that have come on this show. It's just cool to spend an hour or so with some of the people on there. I mean, I'm with Derek Bourne. That's a pretty cool thing. Ah, so, he's all right. Eh, eh. <laughs> I'm not cool. And then just getting the gorgeous <laughs> Yeah, the right. I'm not cool. I'm not worthy. Yeah. Actually, help! I, I got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pick on somebody. We both might know them, actually. So, do you know um, Sonia Carrier? Carrier. Oh, That's that name. name's familiar. I don't know if I'm connected with them on Facebook or not. Yeah, they they are. They're an author out of Ottawa. I, I know her as a, she's hmm. a Twitch streamer as well. So I've been doing something very quiet. Like it's. I've been. I've been doing this. So last year, when 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 the pandemic was at its worst, I started saying notes to people about why I appreciated them. This time around, I've been sending audio notes, like one minute or less audio notes to people about why I think they're awesome. So now I knew the moment I did it with her, I had a hunch that she would blush like a schoolgirl. So I'm just like, I just want to <laughs> because, well, it, it, it's, it was just at one, I, it's actually, I think the most surprising thing to me in, in a time like this, honestly, is more people don't do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, I mean, Look at your friends list sometime. Like if you actually look a look at your friends list, you're friends with some incredibly accomplished, amazing people. Oh, and yeah. yeah. So I mean going out there and just even just saying I appreciate you, even if that's all you say goes a very, very long way. Um exactly. yeah, it does, definitely. Yeah. So I, I I'm actually shocked. I'm just like I almost feel like I'm the only one doing this and I'm like, Well, why am I the only one doing this? No, you know, sometimes I feel like I wonder why people don't message me too often, but then I turn that around and go, you know what? I said, I should message that person. I haven't talked to them in a while. See how they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like normally with social media, I find even with authors, sometimes you'll message one and then you realize, oh, they're just wondering if they, if I want something from them, but no, it's more like, I want to get to know you, be your friend, actually see how are you doing today? Or, you know, whatever's going on in your life. Well, it's funny because, I, like, I've been saying random people, authors, illustrators. So I just go on my list. Like, you seem cool. You seem cool. I sent one, um, one of the one of the first girls get me the blush, like a like a schoolboy way back in like elementary school. I sent her a note actually, and not too as well. Like, just different people, because again, in times like these, especially like we're in Ontario, man. I'm, I'm contemplating punking out a dollarama for reels. I mean, I never thought I'd actually be in that. <laughs> Um, this situation because I really need socks. I went from Amazon, but I don't know when they're going to show up. Yeah. I'm moving, so I'm going to have to actually literally come by here every so often on my mail. Did I get socks in the mail here? Because Amazon <laughs> is, and, and also big difference. Dollarama it's six dollars for socks. For, uh, mm. Amazon is twenty dollars for socks. Damn. Shit. Yeah, you can't beat that. Yeah. So when with the extra money that you would have paid for the plate for the twenty dollars, you could get some snacks. Yeah, I, I could have got more ice cream. Like that was ice yeah, cream money. Exactly. I'm never gonna get back. I'm never gonna get back. <laughs> so, so literally, like I wrote a flash fiction last night. It's like, what did you, why are you in jail? It's like, what'd you do? So underwear and socks. And I saw socks. that on your post. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, it was it just it was just one of those things. Where it's like, yeah, we we live in that kind of like like we're really in a fucked up space that way right now. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm joking about it a little bit right now because it, it's funny. But the truth of the ma- the truth of the matter is, it's just like it, it's kind of sad we're in this boat. So I can be angry and miserable at it. Or I can go, well, I got a really cool friends list. I can talk to them about why they're awesome. And honestly, it's so re- the responses I've gotten have has been actually nothing. Actually, some of them have been absolutely incredible. I, I talked to a friend I hadn't heard from in 20 years. Um, I talked to another friend I hadn't talked to in about a year. It was really, really cool just doing audio back and forth. I um, just got a lot of thanks, a lot of just people that genuinely touched. I got a lot of silent responses too. I, I have a, I see, I have a, I have a, I have a universal theory though. This is my universal theory. We're so used to being mean to each other. And this is a sad commentary on the human race. That when someone's genuinely nice, they don't know what to do. I, I, you know what? I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. But uh, I mean, when you, you when you've got Canadians chatting, though, we're always saying sorry to each other. That's being polite. That's not necessarily being nice. <laughs> There's a difference, right? right? Yeah. That that we, we have a guilt complex. That's that's what all that means is we have a guilt complex. Oh my god, we're doing something wrong, <laughs> right? You think we're, we're we're the ones that? Here's the difference. Like we're not being mean on purpose. We're being mean by accident. Oh my god, did I do this? Mm. Blah blah blah. Like that's a Canadian thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm Apparently, sorry for being sorry. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, you better be sorry for being sorry. I'm sorry for being <laughs> demanding and being sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Blah, blah. blah. Yeah. Okay. But um, it's it's one of those things. Like I I have found that like again, it's just it's just a simple little idea. But it's just like, you know, right this minute, I think you know we would be in a much better place instead of arguing over. Put on a mask, or don't wear yeah. a mask, or get a vaccine, or don't get a vaccine. Or whatever yeah. the case may be. Hey, listen, I think you're awesome. Because I bet you, yeah. because here's the thing. If you find out that if you, if you're nice to people at open stores for people to listen. And the truth totally. of the matter is, the truth of the matter is being so set in one thing. No matter what, it doesn't even matter. If it's, it, it, it can be anything. It could be religion, politics. It could be like what's going on right now. It can be anything. You don't change people's hearts by by being insistent that this is the only way and you need to do what you're told it's not human nature yeah you have to listen to each other that that's that that has always well, communication's been. key communication is first of all number one i mean the fact that we've got people that would rather text than phone call like i i prefer a phone call i love hearing someone's voice actually hearing the warmth in their voice especially from a good friend we're we've kind of lost that a little bit as a society yeah yeah no, no. Well, it, we become afraid of it. Like, like. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'm back. I, I'm old. I'm in the. I'm back in my day. We said the phone would <laughs> go like this. <laughs> We're probably the same age. You're not that old. How old? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You might I turned 32 old. later this month. Oh, yeah, I'm older than you are. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't, I'm said, I wouldn't I'm 39. guess. I'm 39, man. Don't look it. Uh, I, hey, listen, I, I am literally 12 years old at heart. I ask anyone that knows me, go. I cosplay as an adult all the time. It's my secret <laughs> my success. <laughs> it's a secret. <yeah. laughs> Hi. And, so, and, and, some, and, somebody, and somebody watching this right now is just laughing their ass off at that thought. Like, I, I actually, I, um, I follow, like, one of the people I write to, uh, uh, music wise is is, is lights musician based in out of Canada. Okay. And she, yeah. she mentioned cosplay. She actually liked it. she actually laughed at that. I think she like, got her to laugh at that joke. She actually liked it on Twitter. That's right. I'm nice. a fan and a dork. That's right. It's true. <laughs> they are completely I'm completely silly. But the 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 whole the whole thing though is I, I have found like just in doing this in the last little while, um it's been wonderful to see and it's everybody on every spectrum. Like I, I, I honestly think, honestly, building bridges with each other isn't really that hard. No, it's it's just, uh, it's just a willingness to go out there and say, "Hey, I'm Josh. I, I, I like what you do. Can you tell me about yourself?" So, and here we are. It's yeah. a willingness to trust too. Unfortunately, a lot of people have lost trust because of what's happened in their life and things like that. But sometimes you just gotta just try it. Yeah. Just go for it. It's like I've always been one that when it comes to food, I'll try anything once just to make sure, you know, if I like it or not. But the same with making friends. It's like if you don't take that chance, you never will. 
That's true. Well, actually, it's with anything. Like you, yeah. I mean, I think I think one of the hardest challenges, is, one of the hardest challenges as an adult, um, I think when you, especially when you get started, is recognizing the fact that you think you know everything, mm-hmm. and that this is how the world works. Mm-hmm. And then you get then you get to my age, and you're like, I don't know a damn thing about how the world works. Yeah, I've got but, too many holes poked in my box. Yeah. Well, I, I, I just, I just, I just like, I think we all have this fear of being small. And then one day I woke up and I realized I am so much smaller than I could possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. That the more I know, this actually not the bigger I become, but the smaller the world becomes that much bigger and more vast and magical. Yep. And that's how I want to be for the rest of my life. Now that does mean that I am going to get burned, rejected trounced down a little bit because I'm going to take chances and I'm going to get burned from time to time. It's just, that's human. That's just life. You're never going to have a perfect one thought batting a thousand average doing this, but I will try to find those meaningful connections. I'll try to learn Mm -hmm. what I want to learn. And, and, you know, maybe I don't learn everything. In fact, I'm almost certain I won't, but I will, I will hopefully at least learn enough to understand. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I find, especially when you're younger, it's a good idea to try to get some culture. I know for me, like I traveled to Cuba when I was uh, 14. And then Uh, I ended up going to Honduras for a month uh, to do some, just helping out and building some spirit, like, I'm a spiritual person, so I went and fixed up some places of worship when I was down there. And I went with a group of about 20 people that I had really never met before. But through the person that was organizing it, they said, you know, we're looking for more helpers. So I volunteered. By the end of that month, they were my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Like I had never met them before. I'd never spent a day with them before. And yet just so easily we, we connected as a family. And now they're lifelong friends. So, actually, truly, that's actually probably the rarest treasure of all in this world. To be perfectly yeah. honest with you, yeah. um, I've moved so much and I've seen a lot. But the price I've paid for that, to some degree, is I am even no matter where I'm at. There's always a part of me that feels isolated because I've mm. seen and done so many things. Um, there's always that little part of me that kind of just feels like. I'm here, but I'm not here because I'm always feel like I'm on the move. That's the, uh, but on the flip side, the gain I got from it though was, um, I met and seen, like I said, I got to meet and see and do so many different things and mm-hmm. just chasing my, just of all things, just chasing my dreams. Um, it's, there is a, there is, again, it ultimately comes from what I said, like, that willingness to go out there and see the world on its terms and not your terms yep. opens yep. opens you up to so much. And like I said, I I hope like I've become more open minded as I've gotten older. Not less. When I was younger, I was a dumbass. Now that I'm older, now that I'm older, I think I was too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now that I'm older, I'm still a dumbass, but I'm at least a dumbass that's willing to learn. And, I, and there's a so I've evolved mm. a little bit, right? Yeah. Right. And there's the good old, better be a dumbass than a smartass. True. It's so true. So, so true. I, 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 I've seen well, Let it go to your head. Well, you gotta, well, <laughs> yeah, but you still could. Ego is good in two, in two spots. When it comes to negotiating your rates, mm. ego is actually a good thing than that. And it's good to protect yourself sometimes. You need an ego mm-hmm. to do that. To a degree. Yeah, to a degree. Right. There's again, there's a point where it becomes very unhealthy. But there's a point where it's like, okay, a little bit of this will actually protect you. Too much of mm-hmm. this, and I become the bubble boy in the corner that nobody yep. wants to deal with. Yeah. It's bubble ah oh, shit, it's bubble boy. It's there. finding the balance. Yeah, well, and I, I think everybody, I think anybody that, that pursues something they want to be successful at and are, are accomplished things in that, it's the, probably the biggest challenge when you do find success, yeah. right? Because that ego, that ego can destroy, it doesn't necessarily destroy you while you're at the pinnacle of your game, Yeah. but on the way down, it kills you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I find even for me, like, I am one of those authors that checks my Kindle sales every day. <laughs> I probably shouldn't, but it's like if I'm on a good rise and all of a sudden it goes down, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? 
But then I start having to remind myself, this isn't why I started doing this. I did this because I love to write. And if people love my work, great. If not, don't worry about it. I, I'm actually like now that I've got a sequel to one of my books coming out this year, I'm going to be taking marketing a lot more seriously. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I, my Alice in Wonderland Greek mythology epic poem is going to have a sequel. Oh, it's that's the, cool. Yeah. The wildest game of the wildest game of croquet you've ever seen. It's croquet nice. in the end of the world. So uh, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's fun to write. And, uh, Hopefully, I have some news on that soon. But but again, what I noticed what I noticed for the last year for me was I laid an okay foundation. I released two books last year. Now I got now I have to build like a sequel. At least one of them has to be a sequel. A sequel. I feel I felt I feel from a just from a business standpoint, people look mm -hmm. at you a lot more seriously when there's more than one book in a series. Right. Right. So that's that's one. And then two. Um, you know, now that I've done now that I will actually have some actual money to invest in myself i'm actually going to take a real crack at some things and kind of see how the business end of advertising yourself in the unorganic oh, yeah. ways truly works so like amazon ads things like that yeah amazon ads i, I i'm kind of dreading facebook. i still have to learn more about those <laughs> i i'm dread i'm dreading facebook ads just mm. a little just a little mm. facebook's yeah. like quicksand it just always moves and rotates yeah and, pretty much uh, although, although uh, I saw like a meme on Facebook the other day, it's actually pretty funny. Like the things as a as a kid that frightened you, like quicksand. Like we used to watch those terrible TV shows where quicksand was just like right. all knowing threat. <laughs> yeah. And as an adult, it's, just, it's, it's like that's that's great. Like the odds of that ever happening to you are like virtually none. Right. The only sand you'll find in Canada is the beaches. <laughs> that's right. We have beaches in Canada. Y yes, yes, we do. We sure do. On yes, Lake we... Erie and. All the lakes, <laughs> all of the lakes, and 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 you know at the sides of the continent, but yes, yes, the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. Yes, Although Vancouver is very rainy. I will speak from experience on that. It's very, very, mm. very rainy. It's not so yeah, much when my wife and I went there for the first time, it rained usually in the mornings, but by eleven, eleven thirty, it uh, cleared up pretty much. It it it's in, it depends on what time of year you go. Um, like like I was when I was living there, I, it was sad because COVID happened right before the spring hit. I was actually going to mm. get to Vancouver at the pretty point very soon, and I didn't really uh, get to see it. Uh, I got to see Vancouver in the fall. Vancouver in the fall is very beautiful. Oh, gorgeous! It, right, right, Vancouver, Vancouver in the winter time is still actually very like. I, actually, that's the cool thing about Vancouver. Although I'm not sure I'd ever live there again. There's it's I'm fifty fifty on mm -hmm. depending on the day. Um, like when I lived there, it was very weird. I felt like I, I felt like it was, there's was just the, 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 the energy or the vibration of the city or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it was a little off for me. I thought, and when I say, I, and it's hard for me to admit I'm more comfortable in Toronto than I am, than I am in Vancouver. Okay. All right. That's a hard Is thing for me to admit. That's a hard thing for me to admit because I'm not, I don't. I don't hate Toronto per se, but I've never cared when I've lived there. Either. Is it because Vancouver is like just above California Hollywood? Is that why? I I don't know. Kind of has it. Kind of takes on the Hollywood. It, it, it does take on the Hollywood. It does take on the Hollywood a bit for sure. I mean, yeah. I, there is part. There is that is part of it. Well, that was part of the reason why I went out there too, is because I wanted to get into the film industry. Of course, mm. when COVID happened, I wasn't sure there was gonna be a film industry, so I kind of mm. just yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> kind of weird. It's actually it's true because I was actually what I was doing was I was uh, I was actually quietly taking this film class because I was planning on walking away from a job. Mm. I, was, I was I was I was done. I, I I in my in my head I was saving I was just saving up a ton of money as much money as I could um, because I knew that my time. My time in in that job was was days were numbered. Uh, I just didn't I didn't have it anymore. I just I knew I wouldn't necessarily have been fired, but if I stayed long enough, I'd find a way to make it. Oh no! You there, Derek? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I cannot see for, you. For some reason, my camera just disconnected itself. I see that. I don't know why. I, I don't know either. So right now, folks, Derek is invisible. He's at, I, I think. So. I'm still here. He's still here. He's invisible. 
I think this is so he, he, he can plot and commit really, really heinous acts. That's, that's my theory. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, right. Maybe, maybe he's going after that ice cream truck we were talking about. I'm heading right? to your house right now. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Just, just don't take no. my comics, okay? Just don't. Take Apparently, it. it's telling me that uh, it's being used by another something, but it's not. You're, you, that, 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 I don't know what's happening here. That, that, you, you're, you're, your computer just decided to it use your camera for something. Maybe I was just too ugly for this podcast. Maybe, 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 or maybe I was still with this podcast six. It said no, <laughs> can't take it, right? Maybe the, the or, or maybe or maybe just the camera just couldn't take the beauty anymore. Just just could not take it, man. Just said nope, not into it. Are you there? Hmm. Yeah, I'm still here. I really, honestly, don't know what happened. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna disconnect you. Okay. Okay. You're gonna lo- Go, you're going to leave the program. I'm going to entertain people for like five minutes. I'll probably do some terrible <laughs> singing. And then you come back, okay? All right. So, uh, I, so I, took, I, took, I took him off the stream for the moment, guys. I'm removing him as a guest so he can come back in on his own volition. So, uh, let's see. Let's talk about some things here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely moving. And uh, so... I'm excited about it. I kind of get my own space again for a little while. It's it, I'm still doing kind of like a house sitting thing, so I can actually do some crazy investments and stuff like that, and and kind of expend my time before I have to get back into like a real life again. Um, but I'm also just looking at some other opportunities while I'm in this position, and I'm going to try to take advantage of them going forward. Yeah, yeah, I I, I know you can hear him. I, I'm letting him. I'm letting him. I'm letting him do like an ice cream truck thing. Right now, there, Dory. I'm just letting do his ice cream run. See what's going on with his camera, and if you can come back, great. If you can't, uh, we'll we'll figure something else out real quick. Maybe we we'll just we'll quickly stop it and restart the whole thing if it comes to that. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just you know, I'm kind of excited with just everything going on and and, and where we're going from here. Um, you know, I I am I am like it's a new place. I'm hoping to have a I'm hoping to get a haircut some sometime next week, so I can actually get rid of this long hair. I've actually grew. I haven't had a haircut since right before the pandemic. So this is a year's worth of hair growth right here. Um, you know, I'm gonna look like he was talking like I don't look 39. I'm gonna look even younger. I will look like I'm 12 years old in like a week or two, and all this is gone, and like except for the very top of it. It's gonna be like, oh, let's see what's going on here with Derek. Okay, he's going to be restarting his laptop. Kind of just kind of seeing, kind of seeing this. So, this is a rare moment where you can ask me anything right now. So, if anyone's out there and has a question for me, now is the time. Ah, actually, Dory, to answer your to answer you, my move is not going to be that hard this time. I only have like four boxes. Like, I the pandemic forced me to be very mobile. Most of my stuff is actually in a storage locker in Calgary, Alberta, right now. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get all of it back, um, but I didn't have that much stuff even to begin with. Like I, I've been a very, very stoic person in terms of. Once upon a time, I lost everything, and it kind of put things in perspective. Um, ah, I see that. I, what, what the OV broadcast assistant does that in terms of like in cut off? Hey, he's back. I I had the option of restarting my laptop with updates. I'm going. That's gonna take way too long. No, but you're back. You are back. back. Yeah. Hopefully for a decent a amount of time. Uh, l- l- listen, <laughs> if, you, if your camera decides to, maybe your camera just has a wandering eye. Like maybe that's what happened. Like maybe it's like you know. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I mean, is it seeing anybody? I mean, is it, it's possible, I guess, right? Maybe. I don't know. You I'll have to you, ask it after. You, you have to check your camera history. It takes, it'll probably take pictures. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everyone, someone's watching. Someone's watching. Hello. Uh, but no. as I was saying right before uh, I uh, came back, I came on the air, like, I am... Ha, Dory, yeah. No, nine times in ten years. I wish Dory would no. I, so to answer your question, Dory, one year I moved four times in one year. That's my personal record. So it's not cool. But after a while, you just realize that there's not a lot of 
things in life that really matter other than, you know, the things you really care about, which for most of us is actually a really tiny list, right? Actually, it's a fun one. So if you had to break your, if, if there was a magical fire and you could only take one thing, but you could take anything you want out of that house and not including kids or, or wife, but that's to make it out of there just fine on their own. Something you couldn't take on there that needed help on there that needed to help or wasn't alive. What would you take? Oh gosh, that's a loaded question. It is. I'm living and living people, so I mean, it's not like choosing between mm. your wife and your kids. Cause that's that's an evil question. That that's just evil. But can can I can I say like a certain book? Yeah, you can totally say a certain book. I have to grab my Bible. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. There's some good encouraging scriptures in there. And, you know, when you fall on hard times, it's always nice to reread them. So let's see. Probably my, my favorite, um, my, my favorite ones, the ones I, like I, I, when I was going through my really, really, really hard times, um, if you want to go, if you want to go there, I, I, I learned to understand, I understood Job a little bit. I understood, like when I was going through my hard times. I I, I understood. <laughs> I've, I've lived through my a few a few my. I think like the way the Bible is. I think all of our stories are in there in one way or another, but not everybody needs the exact same stories. And, That's an and, interesting way of looking at. Well, yeah. it's it's just because Ezekiel's need. But I don't know if Ezekiel's for everybody. Like to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, right, right? I actually, I'm going through a publication right now that actually goes into Ezekiel's prophecy and everything that he saw and actually what it means for our day. And it's actually pretty interesting and pr it it nails a lot of things on the head. Yeah. Ooh, cool. You have to give me a link to that one. It's all said and done. It's yeah. really, really going. It's like. Dory would take her dad's ashes. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a toss up between, my dad actually gave me a copy of a Bible. It's actually four Bibles in one. This was his notes when he was a believer in there. It's mm -hmm. neat because it's, it's. I get to see that my dad's journey with God. And as I go through my own journeys with God, mm -hmm. um, it's interesting where we're similar and we're very different as well. Um, mm -hmm. Again, some stories, some stories you don't think would apply to you do apply to you, and other stories I I find are, are it's like anything else. Like like there are things in life that are built just for you. But there are also the things in life that just aren't. If the world is bigger than you, it's yeah. a hard thing for a lot of us to accept, but it's the truth. Like it, we don't, we do not, not we don't need to learn the same lessons. We don't need to go through the same tribulations. We don't need to go through the same life. Mm -hmm. We all have different challenges and different things we're trying to learn and need to learn and grow with. And, yep. and like I said, doing like, especially like doing this podcast, I just also recognize the fact that um, I, I've come to a very interesting place in terms of one, one of the, I think one of the things um, a lot of people that aren't Christian, that aren't Christian look at is the idea that, you know, there, some of them feel like they're going to be condemned to, hell or another place because they don't believe i don't know if that's actually the case I, I i after after meeting after meeting and talking just to so many different people and so many different um perspectives and stories i've learned i've recognized something very 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 important i don't really know nor should i well, hell was actually a man-made teaching by the catholic church yeah just to scare yeah. people so there you go right i it just it just was one of the, it's just one of those things where in life i've just learned that um i i've learned in the last again one of those things we talked about like me being bigger than me being me being smaller than i ever realized i don't necessarily have to i don't i don't have to judge anybody and in mm -hmm. fact I go out of my way not to judge anybody anymore because I yep. don't, I don't know. Like I do not know that person's story. I do not know where that person been or went. That's through, just it. Right. Yeah. So, like I, I, for where I work, like, I don't know if you know, I sell olive oil and balsamic. You've probably seen my videos maybe. Um, right. 
And, you know, I've seen people walk in our store, you know, of a different culture, different background, and they kind of seem scared of me when they walked in. I don't know if I'm just a scary looking person or whatever, but I treated them like a human being. And you could just tell after the first minute, they just, they relaxed. Because mm -hmm. they didn't, they didn't know, right? Sometimes you walk into a place and you don't know who to trust, but we all just need to treat each other like human beings. Our hearts beat the same, you know, we eat the same food, essentially. It's just, what's the difference? Color of our skin? That doesn't matter. Uh, uh, my uh, you are my neighbor. Everyone is my neighbor and my brother uh, and my sister. Uh, at, at at the end at the end of the day, most of us want exactly the same thing. It's just exactly it, which is basically to be loved by people. Yep. And ba do what we love to do, and be left alone to do it. And that's yep. every and that is pretty much that is everybody from all over the world. It, we have more in common with each other than we do different. Oh, right. Exactly. At, right. The, and but the differences are so fascinating too because it's the it's the variety the details that definitely that makes life rich yeah I mean, oh totally right totally uh, I had this conversation with the JD about food how food ah, JD Estrada yeah no JD Estrada is awesome yeah. like he's he's um he's, he's a good buddy. He, you know, he, he is one of the sweetest dudes. Um, like I give him, I'm probably going to send him his note tonight or tomorrow, actually. I'm not sure which, which day I'm going to do it. But, um, you know, he's one of the kindest guys out there. But we, just, we were just talking about this. Like, how you can learn an awful lot about a culture with how they do things. Everything mm -hmm. from how they, like, I like, like, when I learn languages, I love learning how a culture swears. Because that tells me, <laughs> it, it sounds silly. But if you said no, it, it's, hey. actually, it's, it's actually genius because... Um, one, I'm encouraging people to play. There's not a person alive that doesn't like to play. Mm -hmm. Two, right? Um, I, I I love I love the fact that when I do that, I learn very quickly what a culture values because what's your what's mm -hmm. you'll be because you, you've learned what's considered profane. Yep. Number three, number three, um, it's a really easy way to make friends. It's yeah. an incredibly easy way to make friends. That's then, true. They, then, then they then they introduce you to their, to their food and it's like yes yeah yeah <laughs> i found even when i was in cuba like their education is free right they can basically learn whatever they want but when my parents and i stayed at the resort there was a guy on the beach handing out towels and just getting to know him he was an x-ray technician that's huh. what he went to school for. And yet he was handing out towels on the beach doing, you know what? I can make more money doing this than that. And I love doing this because I get to meet people like you. Like yeah. that, at my age when I was there, I just went, oh my goodness. I have no idea what life is like. <laughs> I still don't. I'm, I, I, I'm telling you this right now. I still don't. Hmm. Uh, the person that tells me that they're a realist is the person I just don't believe at all. <laughs> I know how the world works. Yeah. Really? Really? Can, can you tell the rest of us? Because I sure as hell don't know. Should I pull up a chair? Yeah, hopefully. Tell me about it. Yeah. Well, no, because I, I, I've learned, like, personally, I just, I've learned that it don't work like you imagine it's going to work. Like, never. Yeah. I, I find, I find it, what tends to happen is, ah, I think I know I got this nailed down. And then you hear God laugh. Oh wait, your world's in your head, right? I got this bigger than that. Yeah, I, I got this figured out. Now, realist is the one thing that doesn't truly really exist. Cynics yeah. exist, cynicism exists, optimism exists, but realism does not isn't really real. There's an irony for you. I think a key to a lot of it, though, is just humility, mm -hmm. right? How many people are you actually going to meet? In, in a day like I have maybe 20 customers come into our store in a day how humble is every person that walks in that door I make good conversation with all of them and you know unfortunately I get those that walk in and think this whole COVID thing's a hoax but like my wife lost both her grandparents to that plus complications within five days of each other and it's just I don't I hate to get political and you know this no, whole no, thing no. The whole COVID thing shouldn't be political. Really, it shouldn't. It's a no. disease, right? Well, it's a virus. 
I shouldn't say disease, that's wrong. But like for those who have actually lost people to this, it's real. I think so this this is why it's politicized. To be honest be honest truth. Our governments have done a really piss poor job in taking care of everybody. Ultimately but, No, no, I, seriously. Here's the thing. You're working, right? Yep. Why? We got we got a we have a pandemic going on. Why are you people, working? Because people have to eat. Government can pay for it. They proved that earlier this year with CERB. Okay. All right. Why are kids going to school? Why are have to educate well, people apparently? Apparently. But when you sit there and hear when you look at what has said and what is done, they don't match. If they did match up, there'd be a lot less complaints. Fact is, big big businesses are allowed to be open right now, and small businesses are not. And a lot of small businesses are disappearing right now. We're a small business. Yeah. I but we're still like, open. Look, you are. But I know quite a few that have not. That paid a huge yeah, the ones that aren't food or things like that. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. You know what? I totally fear feel for them. Yeah, yeah. So, but here, but this is what happens. This is this is the problem. When you create this kind of imbalance, where you're not taking care of what is essential. If essential is if essential is just bare bones, what you need to survive. Beer stores shouldn't be open either, but they are, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, if, if that's if that's essential, the other thing, but if you if if it, but essential is a very very murky word, depending yeah. on even which promise you go into. Yeah. The truth of the matter, and, and if it really, if that's you, true. If you real, so here's what's happened throughout this. Whether I'm not saying the disease isn't severe, but based on actions given dictated by people above us. There's a lot of questions about how severe it really is based on just the lack of integrity you're seeing. After mm -hmm. all, if they're not open and fair in one thing, why yeah. would they be open and fair in something else? There's a and lot of so, things that aren't reported either though. No, no, that's fair. But on this on the on the flip on the flip side, right? On the flip side, right? You don't have the fact of the matter is there is no integrity from the very top and because there is no integrity at the very top there people are going to treat this with a lot more skepticism and cynicism oh i get it, it, it yeah. yeah because and yeah. that's where the political that's where the and that's where the politicizing happens what also what also what also i think is apparent and always been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt is that our governments as they are established cannot handle the power they have and seem to want totally more, right yeah. and seem to want more yep. so it be so in that sense it behooves that the things be politicized because we'll be busy fighting each other and if we're busy fighting each other we're not dealing with yep. people incurring trying to incur power yep. that's why it's politicized that is the entire reason why it's politicized yep. if you sit there and look at what we've done canada has done or what it could have done Right from the very top down, did not do a good job. And I'm not talking no. people not doing what they're told. I'm talking from the very top, the people that made those decisions. Yep. And if they did, and if they screwed up at the very top, it, it trickles down. It all it always does. Yeah. It starts at the top. It never starts at the bottom. It always starts at the top. But it's easier to blame each other because if we blame because we can do something, we feel like we're doing something when we're fighting each other even if we're doing absolutely nothing, right? Yeah. It's easier because we, we have an enemy. We have someone we can fight. We're not grieving. We're not grieving what's being lost. We're not actually dealing with things in a way that maybe would be better for us all. Yeah. We're not Japan. We're not, we're not Sweden. We're not any country. <laughs> of, hey, say what you will about Sweden. They're at least consistent, which actually which says a lot, which to their credit, is it better than what we got? And you know what I, Sweden does too? Is they give every family a bottle of elderberry uh, juice, basically, or syrup. And they take that as a supplement through the winter. Hardly anyone gets sick. Yeah. 
Exactly. And they just give them these bottles because they yeah. want them to be healthy so it doesn't overwhelm the healthcare system. Yeah. And we need to do more things personally so that our health systems do not get am, am, overwhelmed. Am I, am I to released a interesting study about three weeks ago about uh, what the, how you could actually open most of these businesses up because their big factor was they figured that time of, associated with people was a bigger factor of people getting infected than the actual number of people being infected. Hmm. And I think they're right. It may, they explain it how everybody got infected in India, Wuhan, all those places. Right. And all this, and, and all this stuff, all this stuff. But again, that doesn't fit a narrative. None of that fits a narrative. None of that mm. creates a conflict. None of that. Right. Right. Like again, that, that I don't want, to, I don't want to, um, the middle of the fact that people have died of COVID. It's true. People have that of COVID. Yeah. Particularly, particularly the elderly, right? Particularly the elderly has 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 paid a big price in this time. Yeah. No question about that. I have two but, other friends that have contracted COVID, and there's they're still dealing with the effects, the after effects, because it does do things like to your brain. Like I know my one friend; he's more forgetful. Mm -hmm. It's actually really affected his brain. For another friend of mine, she cleans people's houses. She cleaned the house of a lady that was at a restaurant where they had a COVID breakout. Didn't tell her. The lady did not tell her. She ended up getting it, and she's still feeling the effects of it. Mm -hmm. I have a cousin who, with his wife, works at the Brantford Hospital, and now they're starting to bring basically who they can't handle in Toronto to Brantford. Brantford, yep. And it's just, she said, it's 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 just intense here. She says we're all walking around feeling like we're zombies because there's way too much of this going on. Mm -hmm. Like my parents went walking around Mother's Day weekend around our neighborhood. Everybody had tons of cars in their driveway. And I get it. People are tired. They want to do what they want. But when you're doing what you want, then more people are going to die. Because hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've seen things. I've, I've heard of people having parties and things like that. Mm -hmm numbers go up because people are getting tired and I get it. We all want this to be over. But that's not, but that's not the only reason people are tired. Either. We need to stop being selfish. <laughs> but, again, but again, that starts at the top. It doesn't just start yeah. with us. It starts at the top. Yeah. Hey, find the people more, find them, raise the fine, scare people to not do it. <laughs> like it just, yeah, uh, I, honestly, I, I, honestly, dude, we're coming to a point where that won't matter anymore either. I guess. We, we, I did we, hear we, someone was threatening to torch Rob Ford's house. I'm not surprised it's getting to that point. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, Doug like, Ford. Doug Ford, not Rob Ford. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not. But again, but again, this dude, I can't go. I can't buy underwear and socks at Dollarama right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm being real, and I say this like this is like like. The way, like the way we've done this, doesn't. I mean, I think, I think the honest answer is the way we've done this to this point doesn't work because we end up mm -hmm. we, we we keep going back to the same circles over yeah. and over and over again. Yep. So. And now lockdown, at least in Ontario, has been what is it? Another June twentieth, I think. Yes. Yeah. Another two weeks, right? So. Yeah, like, like, but that's I, because people are still doing what they shouldn't be doing. So, I wonder about that sometimes. But like I said, I'm at the. But again, I'm at the. I'm at that point too. It's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm working in a quote unquote essential job, and I'm, I'm watching what I'm watching. I'm seeing what I'm seeing. I'm like, yeah, don't add yeah. up. Like so, is like everything it, is everything in India fake then? No, I'm not saying everything in India is fake. That's not. That's not. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying from my end of things. If I've had friends who've been sick of COVID. I've had mm -hmm. friends. I've I've had friends who've been sick from the, from these from some of the vaccines too. I've seen it on both ends of the equation. Oh yeah, yeah everyone's I, different though. We're all yeah. going to react differently to a vaccine. Uh, oh, and everyone's different even with COVID as well. Some people yep. don't, don't get a damn thing from it, right? Yep. So. The, the 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 thing the thing about it is we as we've done this 
just has not worked. People mm -hmm. are getting flustered. People are people are traumatized across the board. Not just for not just people not just people that have friends that have COVID. Even with each other, how we react to each other. Mm -hmm. We have this lot of this hyper stress just being around oh. each other right now, big time, yeah. right? So that's not healthy either. No. So what 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 is hap what is what what we're coming to? This is where we're coming to. We're coming to a quote unquote fuck it point. Because the th the, the thing is, as we've done this, we can't keep doing it. We we're coming to that point where where it's breaking down. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see other, and then on top of that, we're seeing other places like Texas is open, Louisiana is open, Florida is yeah. open, right? They seem to be doing okay with what they're doing. Maybe some things aren't being reported. I don't know. But I do know, like, you're starting, again, things are opening up. Yeah. And so what- How many what, people down there have been vaccinated, though? Texas, not that many. Yeah, uh, which again, makes me again, wonder. There's, like I said, there's, a, there's, there's some interesting things out there, too, right? But yeah. anyway, we, we, that's, that's a, that, but again, Regardless of where you sit or where you don't sit, we've been doing this for over a year. We have yeah. struggled. Almost a year and a half. Yeah, almost a year and a half. And we're not going to make it to two. You can yeah, already, I think so. No, no, we're not going to make it to two. No. This doesn't work. At least as we've done it, it really doesn't work. So we... We have to think of another way of doing it. Changing the up in the fines, we've come to the point like just the Chinese finger puzzle. The more pressure mm -hmm. you put on something, the more there's going to be resistance. We've hit that mm -hmm. point where we, you really, you really can't. And because again, it's not just that people are tired, not just about people doing the right thing or the wrong thing or any of that stuff. It's been a year of stress, job loss, loss of dreams, loss of homes, loss of life, loss of everything mm. i miss hugs i do too big time big time yeah. i mean i hug my wife but yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i yeah, like yeah. to hug my friends too <laughs> yeah yeah so you've been doing this for a year and a half people break yeah it's not about right or wrong people are going we're not built for this we're just not yeah it's true right so it's like being in a prison cell in your own house yeah exactly it's not so when pe people are going to cut loose, people are going to, because that's normal. It's better, right? It, it is. I, I hate to mm. break this to people. That's the norm, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, yeah, people are going to get sick as a result of it. But people, yeah. are breaking, but people are breaking down in other ways right now, too. This is like, this, what we've done for the last year has been a lack of any real good ideas. Mm. Period. There's been no good in anything we've done. Yeah. Right. But I mean, the whole virus changed and kept kept morphing into something different. So it was like they just kept playing, you know, catch up. That, right? that's, Trying that to figure was, out, that okay, how do we how do we tackle this? It. And that then the next day, how do we tackle it again? Th that's part of it. For sure, I'm not. I'm not saying that's that's part of it, but part of it too is just a really poor understanding of human nature. Mm. Yeah, right. A really, really poor understanding of human nature. Human human nature is to is by our nature we, we question things, we push for, we challenge things. That's True. who we are. So you, you, if you're gonna if you're gonna make so if you're gonna make a system if you're gonna make a system try to keep people safe. Identify the most vulnerable populations. We did that. Figure out what actually is working, not just a mandate. PPE. One in ten thousand people. One in thousand. One in ten. It's a one in ten thousand chance of getting COVID from a surface to surface contact. Can we mm -hmm. go beyond some of the sanitizing shit? Like, like keep up yeah. to date on some of the stuff that we were doing, right? Mask. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Ma ma okay. Mask. Cool. Fine. But at the same time, at the same token. Who's the vulnerable populations? What are we doing really to isolate them? What are we do? like a better ventilation systems for old people's homes? If we are going mm -hmm. to send kids to school, and you know you're going to do it, why didn't we just go put them outside? We had hockey arenas. 
seriously, we had hockey mm -hmm. arenas, we had baseball diamonds, we had all these giant spaces that were not being used. We could have done something with them in this time. Yeah. And none of it, like, like I said, but what there was, so again, these, again, it's easy to play in this in hindsight and some of this and for sure in hindsight, but some of these answers were literally right there too at the very mm -hmm. beginning. So I, I look again, so you have people that are tired. Yep. You have a real virus, which definitely makes things really, really shitty to begin with and the lack of poor choices and questionable judgment. When you get to that, when you combine all that, you get to the point where we're at right now. You got people mad because no one's doing the right thing. You got those people mad because again, the, there's no good answer either. And here we are. We're all again going back to being frustrated. Yeah. Right, right. You really you've got you've got imperfect people making mistakes. At the end of the day, yeah. At the end of the day. I mean, whatever decision you make, it may not be the right decision, but you know, we're all imperfect. We're just trying to figure things out. Well, I, I, like I said, there, I, again, looking looking at what could have been done, there were ways to, like I said, me, I almost all my anger is at the very top hmm. because that's, to me, that's where it starts and ends. Yeah. The world they created, the world, the decisions, the decisions our leaders made are the ones we've dealt with. And as much as I made fun of the Dollarama shit, there's a lot of other things too that you just look at and go, what the hell are you doing? Right. Yeah. But, but again, looking from the very top to the very bottom. So instead of looking at the top and going, Hey, have you thought about ventilators from the old folks homes? Have you thought about better stuff? If you guys send kids to school, why aren't we doing stuff to improve the schools? Why are we trying to keep it like mm. some of that shit status quo in the middle of this? Are you serious? Mm. Right. But again, some of this is easy for me to say. I'm armchair quarterbacking at this point. This is, this is all. Oh, we all are. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the one, uh, I think I, the one thing I've refused to kind of do is kind of, I, 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 Again, I'm not talking about the guy that go literally follows you in the grocery store without the mask and it's just heckling you to death. I'm not talking mm. about that shit. But I just realized, that, again, going back to the very beginning, something we talked about, I am in nobody else's shoes right now. I have yeah, no idea good. what to do. I have no idea what people are facing. Yep. The idea of being told I'm doing the wrong thing by somebody right now is is probably a, just a bad, just a bad way to start things off. And on the flip side, me being insensitive to the fact that people are getting sick, people are dying from this, that that's also insensitive too. Yeah. Right? I, I think I think I, I think like I said, this is a bad situation. Period. And I don't think there's a and again, we we haven't had a good solution the whole time. So yeah. the easy route is to blame each other. And I think honestly, that doesn't serve anybody any of us any good at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had a we had a customer come in our store and he said, you know, you've got two sides to this whole thing. You've got the people who, you know, they say this thing's a hoax. And he said, and this thing is fake. And then you've got the people who are scared of this thing so much that they won't do anything. And I just put my hand up. I said, and you got those who have actually lost people to this. Mm -hmm. And he just looked at me, bought his stuff and ran out of the store. Because yeah. really, I'm going, what are you going to say to me? What are you going to say to my wife who lost both these grandparents within mm -hmm. a, five days of each other? Like, what exactly. are you going to say? You have no idea. It, no, I don't. And and like I said, that, like I said, so again, I would be an insensitive asshole to condemn you for feeling the way you feel. It kind of sucks. Yeah. Right? Um, not gonna, I'm not going to say you're wrong not feeling what you're feeling. But... I also the same again from my end just being being a quote unquote essential worker in this time. Yeah. I, I, I'm not surprised. This, I this feel for everybody, it. whether yeah. you're an essential worker or not. I feel for everybody. I wish we didn't have to deal with this. What I do think might bring people together is dinosaur books. Yeah. Lego. Lego. I have one coming out in August. So <laughs> <laughs> wow, I see. <laughs> Go to something positive. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I'm just feel I feel just because we've had this discussion and then we'll move on. I'm gonna clarify kind of where I'm at in this whole thing. 
I do think the virus is real. Hmm. I'm not, I don't want you to take this exactly the wrong way. I just, I just, I, because I know people have died from it, but I don't really know how serious it is as a whole. And the only hmm. reason I say that is- I don't think we ever will. No, no, and, 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 and this is, this is the, this is kind of, this is kind of my, this is, this is my like giant disconnect. And this is why I, I've been very, very, very try not to condemn anybody too much on this. Um, I, I have, again, from the very top actions and words don't mix, hmm. which as a general rule of thumb, I'm very suspicious of, especially when I see stuff like praise our essential workers, which reminds me of praise our police officers and firemen from 9-11. I've heard this story before and I know how that ends and I really don't want to be a part of the ending of that. Right. Um, when I see hear narratives I heard before, I have a tendency to, to go, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So I don't question there's a disease. Yeah. I to that, you could also say, you know, how bad really was H one N one? How bad really was the Spanish flu or, well, Spanish no. flu was 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 <laughs> that one's that one's documented pretty bad. But I mean, how bad was SARS? How bad was mm. like? Is cancer real? Could are, you go are, that way? Are, I mean, they're saying there's there's apparently. I, I, you know. I, I think I think I think this is an interesting question. I'll I'll ask you this, okay? COVID killed slightly more by about a, a half a million more people. I think it was 2.3 million in a year. Is, is that is that about right? I think so. Somewhere okay. around there. Yeah, it was 2.3 million people worldwide. In 2018, tuberculosis killed 1.9 million people. Now, here's the interesting question. This, I think, is the, our ultimate condemnation as a society. If COVID had just been isolated to the third world, would we have noticed? <laughs> Probably not. It's just a flu. That's what everyone says. It's just a flu. Yeah, it's just a flu, right? And, 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 or like it's just tuberculosis or whopping cough, which also kills a lot of people. Mm. Most of them, like what this has forced us to look at is something is something that is as true of nature as anything else. Diseases come all the time. And no matter how much we think we are powerful, immortal, wealthy, protected, safe, most of that's an illusion. Life is fragile, and it always mm. will be. Definitely. And and the fact of the matter, and, and the fact of the matter, and the fact of the matter is, um, that COVID didn't change that. COVID mm. is just a part of that system. It has always been there. Unfortunately, what COVID has done too is it's shown that people actually do believe in survival of the fittest. It, oh no, they do. And it's unfortunate. Yep. A tree. Yeah. No, Dory, you're absolutely right. Like all everything I just everything I I I described is treatable. But that actually actually that that actually emphasizes my point even more. The fact of the mat the fact of the matter the fact of the matter is we have treatable, controllable methods of dealing with a lot of the problems we have in the world. Yep. And we do nothing. People use the word privilege a lot. Mm -hmm. This is my use of privilege. We only care about this because it impacts us. This is the only reason we care. If it impacted mm -hmm. just a small segment of the world, then we wouldn't even blink. No. And that, that might be our biggest condemnation. And survival of the fittest actually goes against a core thing in humanity, mm. which is our sense of justice. Mm -hmm. You see someone fall on train tracks, what's your first instinct? Help. Exactly. What's the difference between that and maybe doing something that could save lives? Point. There's a study that was actually done. This is really interesting. It was done in the UK and it was done at a uh, basically baby young people hospital and they would put on a play for kids and it was a play about a cat it was trying to open a box and they'd bring in a, a rabbit with an orange shirt. The rabbit with the orange shirt would actually help the cat open the box. 
Then comes along a rabbit with a green shirt. And it doesn't help the cat. It slams the lid back down every time the cat tries to open it. They would present the rabbit with the orange shirt and the one with the green shirt to the babies and the little kids and say, which one do you want to play with? Nine times out of 10, they would go for the one that actually helped the cat. Mm -hmm. Even at a young age, they, we are born with a sense of justice. Mm -hmm. It's things get messed up as you live your life. Yeah. But at the same time, we still have that sense of justice in us. Mm -hmm. Yes. So why is it so hard to do it when you become more of an adult? The lack of integrity of what's around you. Exactly. If people actually had more integrity, we could do I, things. I, 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 I'm going to go back to something I said earlier. I really think by and large, people, people are taught from the, from the top. That's the the bottom line there. I think. Well, the education top. system's rigged anyway. Not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not. even the education system. You, we are taught by what we see. Mm. What do we see? Selfishness. We see all everywhere, and not to not. And again, it's not on the ground level. I find there's more honor in people on the same level than there are people above you. Uh, people above you or below you. Mm. People on mm -hmm. your level tend to actually be very honest with you because we're, mm -hmm. we're, 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 there's a very clear objective of what's of what's there. It's when someone has a power leverage or power disadvantage because the mm -hmm. temptation is okay. If you don't, if you have the power advantage, would you use it? That's Maybe? it. You know yeah, what? Yeah, for my superhero series in my first book, that's there's a line in my book. I've I've always put the teaser out there every once in a while just to remind people that it's basically it doesn't matter how many people you save, it doesn't matter if you defeat the villain, if you have the ability to help someone else, it's not that hard. Just do it, whatever the sacrifice. Yeah. I mean, by and large, I agree with that. The only time I, I back off on that one is when the person doesn't want to be helped because there's nothing you can do. And that's hard too. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only, but, but besides, but for the purposes of what we're, what we're going here, what I, what we, what this time has taught me more than anything else, it just taught me two things. We do not learn from our history mm -hmm. and two, our culture has no integrity. Yeah, no. and when you come, when you come right down, and I'm not just talking the people that have a party. I'm talking from every angle you can imagine. We have no integrity, mm. and that, if you go by from his from a history perspective, that means generally speaking, societies with no integrity are usually in decline. Yeah, it'll so, implode. Yeah, it'll they implode. implode. They implode. So that is what this has taught me in this time because i like, like i said i'm somewhere in the middle i understand there's a virus but i also yeah. see what's going on i'm like you're not going to get people to cooperate doing it this way you're just not yeah. right so but that's where we're at that, but that's the path we've chosen and it's mm. not shocking to me that there's this conflict as a result right now yeah. again that's my perspective Hey, maybe this whole thing started because people wanted to, uh, you know, go to Area 51 and storm the place. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> that kind of came into the news and out very quickly. <laughs> so, so uh, apparently, apparently, Dory said, 32 years in healthcare here. Nothing about the last year has surprised me. Nope. It's it. Honestly, mm -hmm. I nothing. And to be honest with you, and that's another conversation for another day. Yeah. Nothing about the healthcare system in both countries has surprised me one day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't want. I don't want to keep being depressed going down. Going down this. I will. Can I will say this though? For though, because I feel like maybe not. None of people have said this to you. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your wife's mm -hmm. loss. Um, I I wish there's more I could offer to you than uh, condolences, but that's all I got. Um, uh, hey, even even a condolence, it, it means yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, like I said, when when this is over, and it will. Again, I think this year it come as we know it, it comes to a head sooner in one way or another. But yeah. but when this is over, um, when I do see you, because I probably will see you at some point down in the in there, I'll give you a big hug. 
Okay. Hopefully. Done? Hey, I got one waiting for you with yeah, your okay, name done, on it. Done. Okay. Can you yeah. be gentle? I'm brittle. I'm brittle. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it, like, like, um, but, but like I said, moving, moving past that, I just, I, because I, I think, I think, um, you know, on the flip side of all that too, I have seen a lot of support, especially through all the authors and people and readers that I've made friends with on, on Facebook. Uh, when I posted about that, there was a ton of support. And yeah. you know, some of those authors and readers, I don't know, I haven't known for very long. No, yeah. and yet they they rallied, and it it you know it yeah. it meant a lot. I know yeah. there's good, still good people out there. Oh, I know there's, there's still good, genuine people out there. There's there's good, genuine people on on in practically everywhere. I, it, like I said, yep. the world hasn't really changed. We're just all trying to deal with a very bad circumstance in our own way. It's showing and everyone's true colors. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. But no, there's a lot of good people out there still, man. Yeah. I love them. So who, so who did you get? So what did you take the opportunity to learn in this time? Did you, did you get a chance to do anything cool? A little bit of filmmaking actually, sort of, uh, yeah, for my business, I started doing cooking videos. Okay. Just to show people how to use the olive oils and balsamics that we sell for our store. And it has been a lot of fun. There's people, like, part of my video is I slide into my kitchen. I have to wear the right type of slippers to do it. But when people come into the store and they go, by the way, I love your videos and I love the slide. I usually know that they've they've really enjoyed the video, especially when they say that. And, I, and they ask me questions like, do you do that with graphics or anything like that? I go, no, just slippers. <laughs> <laughs> and just the fact that yeah it, it puts a smile on their face and that's all i really wanted to do was give people something positive and if they can learn something about cooking i'm still learning about cooking i learned that from my wife and i put that in video form and if i can show people how to make something new they haven't tried before great mm -hmm. if i can give them something to look forward to every week awesome i'm up to 40 or no 52 videos now on YouTube and Instagram and it's just kind of become its own little are, are, show. Are, are, are you are you daring to travel into the land of TikTok? Because it sounds like something you can travel into the land of and do. I am on TikTok. Yes. <laughs> More I'm for my there. author stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More for the author stuff, not really the cooking stuff, but maybe. Yeah, we'll see. You, you, you honestly should merge them because like, like honestly, this is so... Authors are terrified of sales. Usually on some level, they're a little terrified of sales. Yeah. I mean, and I, you obviously do care because you did you do browse your, your Kindle at like how often? Yeah, yeah. You, almost you every do, day. Yeah, almost every day, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, there, there, yeah. there, there. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Don't mess up the hair. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. No, like um, what I've learned, what I've learned in, so yeah, yeah, no, he, I'm going to, Dory, I'm going to ask him to give me a link to all his stuff when we get to the end, especially. The I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, I'll but, but, send you that. When, when, but when we do that, but when we do that, before we do that, just a thought for you. So sales, most authors think of sales is just numbers, getting numbers up, getting readers mm. up, getting this up, getting that up. What you should be doing is doing what you do best in sales tell mm. stories yeah right and the fact of the matter is okay when you talk, like your cooking video based on just how you described it is a story there's an act one and act two and act three that's true in your spirit, right so you're telling a story with your cooking and you're showing a little personality you're showing yep. kind of why you rock rock like and, and you bring out a side of yourself that that is very personable fun you enjoy it. I can tell just on the smile yeah. on your face right now. You yeah. enjoy the hell out of this. Yeah. So what you need to do is take that joy you have right now and apply it to your books. Yeah. And right? I do. I mean, I've been having fun with TikTok, actually. I've been doing these little videos of basically odd author problems. I've had it where my books were in the dishwasher. My books were in the uh, toaster oven. 
Uh, one of my books was sitting in my frying pan, just, just fun little stuff. And I actually have been doing that just to just silly little things, whether they get laughs or not great, whatever. Yeah. I actually should do like, a, like the cooking video gone wrong. And just like, <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you should do. That's literally what you yeah. should do. It's yeah. Like, right. But like you, you, it's like oh god, I gotta promote my books. Where are my books? I, I fuck, I, I gotta start cooking. I gotta start cooking. I feel better. And you <laughs> yeah. start putting like all your stuff together. Like, yeah. like shamelessly plug your like your store as you're as you're as you're doing it. Then you're yeah. cooking. Why does it smell like burnt burning paper? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that would probably go viral. <laughs> it would, it would, right? <laughs> Actually, no, it would make it go viral though. We would literally make it go viral. A right? cameo from you. That that that'd be that'd be great. You serve yeah. it to me. Just serve it to me. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Your eyes. <laughs> right? Or, or, or yeah. actually just, just like, you know, or just like, um, or in your case, like when it's all, all said and done, you actually just eat a little bit. It's so sweet and tasty. And it's crying. <laughs> it's it tastes hard. like reader's tears. <laughs> it's like my tears. <laughs> right? And, right? <laughs> Yeah, actually, AF Stewart's got oh, yeah. the day of the end product being your book. You should like honestly, you and I, I say this. I say this like when I you meant when you mentioned your cooking videos, you literally like beamed up. You became you're a likable guy. Don't get me just the wrong way. You became a lot more likable and inviting because again, joy. You yeah. have this enthusiasm it's that so invites true, yeah. people invites people to come in. You have like you've already kind of created an identity for yourself on YouTube and Instagram with your cooking stuff. Yep. Right. Facebook more for the author stuff. Yeah, that's, that's, I have that's a really cool. strong yeah. following on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, no, no, I, I know, yeah. Derek. More, I mean, I, you definitely, you definitely have an. Or at least I out. hope I do. Yeah. I hope I do. I, I shouldn't get. I, uh, I, I, well, not, do, humble, do, humble. Do, 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 listen, little, little ego is fine. I look at me, big head. I can tell you, <laughs> you see it right there. But anyway, that big. Yeah, well, maybe I just have a big head. I don't know. But anyways, um, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, right, is you got this enthusiasm with some of this other stuff you do. You need to find a way to bottle that enthusiasm into yeah. your marketing on your books. And if that means you combine your cooking, your love of cooking, and your other products, and you merge them together, because they're both, yeah. it's a part of you too anyway, right? Yeah. It's a part of who you are. Why not like like okay look, we had like COVID therapy aside, right? We've had a wonderful we've had we even and even even in that even in that, we both like we both presented both parts of our personalities out there just mm -hmm. how we see and how we see things, good bad or and, like we we I know we don't fully agree, but we got a bigger sense of who you are, in this conversation yeah. what you care about what you value. And it's okay to disagree. Oh, absolutely. No, at that day, yeah. honestly, honestly, good discussion. All things considered, yeah. good, good discussion. Yeah. What I am, what I am, what the point is, like, I do this show because I get a chance to talk to you about you mm. because you're a fascinating person. Everybody on this show is a fascinating mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> you write books. Okay, here, here, I'm going to build you up here. You write books, you publish books. Oh, you don't have to do that. No, no, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. no, nope. it. <laughs> <laughs> right? You write, you're, you write books. You're, you're a businessman. You're driven. You create stuff. You love to experiment. You love to cook. You care about people. You're genuinely a sweet guy. Your only crime might be in this whole conversation is you've shown that you cared maybe a little too much about some things. And, that's, and honestly, if that's your worst habit, if that's your honestly your worst quality, there are far worse things I could hate you for. I mean, you like ice cream, right? I mean, I would. Love I, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, so there, you're a human being. The only thing right? I don't there like in life is mint chocolate. That, that's fair. I won't I'm hold not that a mint chocolate fan. I, I, I won't hold that against. I've never you. been brushing my teeth and thought, you know, go great with this chocolate. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I just, just that's fine. I won't hold my it wife, against you. My wife glanced at me when I said that. Yes. But but on on. <laughs> she likes mint chocolate. Your wife that's one of our differences. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. And, that, that, yeah. and your wife has excellent choice taste in chocolate. That's okay. I won't hold that against you. All of which to say is, <laughs> all of which to say is, you're a decent human being, and you're an half, human half human decent, human. half decent. Okay, well, uh, I'll give you a quarter. Okay, how about a quarter? Okay, I sure. give you a quarter. Okay. Eighth? You're a quarter, a quarterly decent human. 
being, you can keep fractaling us down. I mean, you like very fun if you want, but you're, you're a decent human being. You're a fascinating human being. You create your own stuff. You've been doing videos. You probably, I mean, I was going to ask you about this. I'll probably mention this as, a, as a, just a guess on my part. You probably want to do this a longer form storytelling with what you've learned with the cooking at some point with what you've done film wise. I'm almost spent money on it. it. Just if nothing else, to satisfy curiosity to see what you can tell with it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I could see. So again, you're building because you again I get this hunch. The thing about cooks cooking, cooking is it, like baking is precision. Baking you have to have oh. the right right the right yeah. like ingredients, and yeah. you can you can do some experimentation in baking, but not the base. The base you can't touch no. at all. No. The cool, exactly. the cool thing about the cool thing about cooking, cooking gives you a lot more freedom to play. You can yeah. right a lot more flavors, a lot more flavors, a lot not not only a lot more flavors, but just a lot of different things you can try, and it doesn't yeah. ruin necess. You may not get the taste you're looking for, but you might still discover something incredible. I mean, you still occasionally discover mm. crap, but for the most part, right? It's not baking where if you screw up a little bit, right? If you screw up a little bit, you eat your bone. Mm. Right, yeah. it, it it if you screw up a little bit in cooking, you probably still have a decent dish. Too much salt yeah. doesn't well, it doesn't usually kill a dish. I actually did an accident yesterday. My accident yeah. yesterday was I was making my eggs. I had my onions and peppers in the pan. I thought I was reaching for oregano, and for some reason, I grabbed dill. How was and that? I, but the thing was, I had already put chipotle olive oil in the pan. So I'm going. I started shaking in the dill, and I'm going, "This is dill. This isn't oregano. What have I done?" I'm going, does Chipotle and dill go together? Sure enough, it was delicious. Yes. If you have not tried Chipotle and dill together, it just, it blew my mind. So, so, so I mean, but that's the real thing about cooking, right? Sometimes yeah. you discover something better. You can exactly. mess up in cooking. You can mess up in cooking and you can, and you can still discover an amazing yep. thing I've in learned the process. That. You can't, I'm not saying it can't happen in baking, but it's far less likely if you mess up in baking that that's going to be no. the result, right? But that's kind um, of like writing too, right? You could yeah. make a, I'm very much a pantser when I write, but you know, you could uh, throw something in your book that, you know, initially you might think, is this going to work? Is it not? But later on, it, it actually makes it pretty perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I'm doing, I'm doing one right now. Once this, my dinosaur book comes out in August, I'm writing another one. That's actually a spinoff from that where I'm putting a sixth century old English woman in a Android dystopian future, along with a saber tooth tiger from prehistoric times. I'm going, is it going to work? Maybe, maybe not, but I'm going to try it. See what happens. For me that I'm doing that experimental like book right now. I, it's my homage to Fahrenheit 451. It's called lights out. Mm -hmm. I'm drawing it. I never cool. thought I would, yeah, I never thought I would. I'm drawing stuff in it as well. That's cool. Off, yeah. I'm scared to death in like the best no. like, kind of way, but I'm scared to death. We'll get to it's me. okay to be scared to do oh, that. Absolutely no. Here's what I have found. It's like this is this is now this is probably what's gonna get me killed someday. And I'm I'm, I'm, okay. I, I'm very I listen. I have found that the way forward in life is to face the things you're most afraid of. So I have a ten. I have a ten. I have a. I have a tendency to do that. Mark Leslie correctly asked me. You kind of get off on the fear a little bit. So it's, it's a little bit. Yeah, I enjoy it to some degree. And, and and the reason I enjoy it is there's a certain high when you're afraid. When you're mm -hmm. truly afraid, you can you see and hear everything. Mm -hmm. And you don't get that sensation very often. And it doing anything else. There's a couple other ways to do it, but they're not as consistent as that rush of fear. Mm -hmm. So, again, I might, I might, I might be the guy that dies off a rubber band bungee jump, like like crazy ass bungee jump somewhere down there, and I'll be okay with it because no. I again, yeah, because I took the risk, and I'm, I'm and I'm, I'm again, I'm blatantly freaking crazy. Mm. Um, but I've learned this in life that for anything I've truly, really wanted out of it. I very often have to face the very things I'm most afraid of. Mm. And that I think is probably one of the best lessons I've ever learned. Because when you get on the other side of that fear, it's not that you're still, it's not that you're not afraid. You're still a little, no matter, you're still mm -hmm. a little scared.
But when you move past it, you find that like you, you find this space where you didn't know existed, but you can grow. And yeah. that has always been that has always and that has been something I learned that at like seven years old. And Jeez. for the most and for the most part and for the most part I have listened I've gone into the fear. Now every once in a while I'm I'm human too. I'll back up like oh fucking no I'm not but like but 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 for the most part it's like I get that feeling like I gotta do this. Yeah. And sometimes it's like Yes, and or, and drawing was like that for me. Yeah, I had to do this. It was one of my dreams is to do comics. I love to do comic books. Oh, that's and awesome. Yeah, well, I got to how to draw. I don't know if you've been watching me do illustrations on uh, throughout my. I haven't, but I will now. Yeah, I just drew Doctor Doom not the other day. Sweet. So yeah, I've drawn Sweet. these. I, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to be experimenting with color soon, which is good. Which is mm. really really cool. Um, again, scared to death. I don't, I'm not pretending I'm good right now, but I'm having fun and I'm discovering yeah. things about myself along the way. Right. And that's really, really all you have to rely on is, is just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can't tell you how scared I am with my next dinosaur release. Cause I'm kind of doing it from a speculative fiction angle of how I think dinosaurs maybe could have been actually in prehistoric times. And I'm scared to death because everyone already has this preconceived thing like Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, people getting torn up and things like that. Mine, not so much. So is it fun? It was fun though. It was very fun to write. Then then this is then I'll give you the answer I, I think I think I think the Almighty would give you. It will reach the people it's meant to reach. That's and it too. People, right, right. I mean, it reached the yep. people it's meant to reach, and on the flip side, the people that absolutely will hate it, and there's always a chance. Learn from Howard Stern, and mm. I, right, Howard Stern was more hated than the people that supported Howard Stern the most were the people that hated yeah. him the most. So, if you change conventions and you challenge and do something that's very fun and engaging and entertaining, there's going to be a group of people. Oh my God, this is so different and so cool and so fun. Mm. And that's awesome. And it's not what I imagined it to be. And the reason people, this is not what I imagined it to be. Yeah. Dinosaurs should be like this, <laughs> and like this. Yeah. And, 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 and those are, but those are cool people too. But some of those people are going to argue with you till you're blue in the face. Oh, probably. Have, but but they might still buy your books. I'll buy this book. You'll be like, yeah. you'll be like, thank you. <laughs> and, and that and that and that sounds thanks for the one star review <laughs> hey listen I, i've already said I, i've already said this on previous talk i'll take all the one star reviews in the oh world. i know yeah i know I'm a i laugh i laugh at you now <laughs> there was one guy that said my first book was more was more boring than tax law ouch i was ouch. going okay but i read it back now and i'm going you were just trying to be a jerk weren't you <laughs> You are <laughs> pretty much. Also, also, I think I'd be asking what's tax law. I'm curious which one's you're reading. Oh, reading? just yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, um, I know that'd be my response. <laughs> really? Which one yeah. are you reading? I, I want to know. Yeah. Was there I a plot to that book? What? Was there yeah. a plot to tax laws? I sometimes I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Do loopholes also count as plot holes? Yes, mm. I'll say yes. I'll say yeah. yes. But going back to something before we went down this rabbit hole, which is great. <laughs> Are you going to film something bigger? Film something bigger? Oh, I don't know. We'll see. I, I have, I've had people come into the store and be like, so has uh, Food Network sno snoop scooped you up yet? And I'm going, no, not really. No, I, but. I so, kind of don't want to be. No, no, I, I, I don't. I don't feel. I don't feel. I. I don't feel that that's what I'm asking you exactly. It's not. It's not. It's not that. I mean, it may not even be a cooking thing. I just think because it would be again, you you have you have. It's like any other form of storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. I've learned to draw. I've started drawing. Actually, would you like to see a couple drawings? Would you like sure. to see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Where I started at, and I'll show you. Be where a I'm show at off. Now. Damn right. <laughs> no. You can see this. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Yes, you can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninja Turtle. Ninja Turtle, right? 
Sweet. Sweet. Huh. Let's go to. Is that Donatello? That was that was that was that was uh, Donatello. If you haven't read the comic yet, I'm not going to spoil it. Oh, nice. The, the last Ronin. That's awesome. Yeah. Then wait, 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 wait. I got, I got, I got. I'll show you some more here. It's better than better than me drawn. Ocarina Link, obnoxious boots. Okay. Obnoxious yeah. boots. <laughs> hey, listen, man. That's awesome. If if, if 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 he hit you with one of those, you'd be down to the count. Totally <laughs> That's true. The That's true. I would not want to face those. No, no. Yep. And let's see. Let's do another one here. I will have sketches in my dinosaur book. Actually, I have a friend of mine who's an amazing artist, and she's done some dinosaur pictures for it. Dr. Doom. Oh, Doctor Doom. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited to see who Marvel actually chooses to play him in the MCU. I, um, someone, someone that can actually, it has to be like, not, I'm not saying it needs to be Ian McDermott, but mm. someone that understands Ian, Ian took the Emperor and made, made, the Emperor is a camp, really a campy character. If you really sit there and think that, about it, he really no. is a camp character. Something, something dark side. That's yeah, right. right. But, <laughs> but. He was a good enough actor to take the camp and make it fun. Yeah. And then, and then add like his own, like he had, you could tell a, like there was points he had a blast playing that character mm -hmm. and you felt it, right? You mm -hmm. literally felt it. And that's why it was so good. So Dr. Doom has to have an actor that can do the same thing. Take the campy yeah. parts. Like Doom talks in the third person. That yes. is so easy yeah. to like not take seriously. Right. Which I remember and, they said that Marvel was courting Keanu Reeves for a role, and I actually thought he would be an interesting Doctor Doom. It's ooh, let's think about that. I mean, he can do campy. I mean, I no, just no, watched he, recently no, he, the newest he, he, Bill and Ted movie, and I'm going, "This is amazing," just because you could tell he was having fun with it again. Hmm. But he does have the intensity from John see, Wick. I, I'll, I'll give you this: I would be interested to see it. Yeah. It'd be interesting enough that I think he'd have, I'm not sure he's the right guy. I'm going to say that's maybe not, point, but he's an interesting enough choice. I would actually, I would, if you, if, so you, if they said he was that guy, I'd be yeah. like, maybe like, yeah. I, I, like I, I, maybe I, I, and if you saw him versus John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, that would be very interesting. That'd be very interesting. The, the challenge with the, the challenge, the other challenge with Doom is again because of the range of camp mm. and pain. Yeah. Doctor Doom has a lot of I, I can I don't know if Keanu can do that, but then again maybe he can maybe maybe he blows completely blows me out of the water on that. Um, as long as he's better than the '90s Fantastic Four movie where Doctor Doom kind of overdid his acting with his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen that movie? Which one? There's like three of them. There's there's three of well, them. Well, it, it was bad. the one. It was the one from like the early '90s when they first had graphics that were horrible. Are you talking like the campy version? Like the, okay, there was the there was the, the Fox. very campy. There's two, this oh, was before there's, Fox. Oh God, no! I did. I I, I seen another bit of that. That that was yeah. Oh, uh, my my wife loved watching that movie with me. <laughs> and by love, did did, did, did you just a lot of sarcasm. Movie? Yeah, did she hideously beat you? Like, did you come back like next day with a black guy and said what happened? Well, like, it was downstairs. more. Yeah, as soon as it was done, it was more of a. It was more of a. I'll never get that time life back in my life. No, she, she, she loved you. Like, <laughs> yeah. I love you, dear. Thank you. I was. I wanted to watch it just because I wanted to laugh at it because I knew it was going to be horrible. <laughs> It, it's okay. It, 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 it's okay. I've watched the Star Wars Christmas special and Highlander mm -hmm. too. I can't get yeah. those hours back ever no. again. No. <laughs> no. There's only one Highlander movie, by the way. Just, I'm just, I'm just saying. After watching that's Highlander, true. There's only, there's only one. There, there's, that's there's, true. It, it, and and that's it. That, that it, if anyone says otherwise, shh. yep. Yep. <laughs> just no. Uh, no. But um, no, I. I They've all like box killed me in Fantastic Four. Oh, Fox, me too. Legit, like killed me because it had good moments, but as overall films, 
No. It's the Fantastic Four. It should be fun. Like well, that's the fun that like 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 that's a family like. You can't quite do the Ninja Turtle vibe of Fantastic Four, but it's Indiana Jones, a family of Indiana Jones explorers with superpowers. Mm. How do you screw that up? Like, yeah. how do you do that? Yeah. Well, right? I know. Yeah. I know. But I, 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 I digress. I mean, I'm, but, but it like, and, and actually the one that really killed me was I actually tried to watch the later ones. The last mm. one I did, that, that one hurt. A lot. Oh, I went to the theater for that, and again, I'm never gonna get that time back. Okay, now I now I'm just gonna give you a second hug. Ugh, yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> a second hug. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, you had to watch that. <laughs> I'm a Green Lantern fan, dude. I'm a Green Lantern fan. I had the Green Lantern movie to. to... You no, know, I don't mind that movie, honestly. I don't mind I, it. I I I'm... I do, but I here's here's why. Captain America, she was showed you how to do it right. They, like Captain mm. America, the first Avenger was completely a World War II story. Yep. They should have what they should have done is they should have taken that Green Lantern movie and went in like two. Mm. Have Hal fight Hector Hammond, maybe have Sinestro show up kind of at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. um, and then take him to space. Don't even have the core in this movie. Fuck that. Just have yeah. Hal on Earth with the ring, figuring this out, fighting a really, really, really. Because Hector was cool. Like, Hector mm-hmm. was like, cool. Like, I, the cast was really, really, like, was really good for that yeah. movie. Hector was underused. Yeah, no. He should have been, he, he should have been, a, like, again, you take out that entire second half of that movie with the core and mm-hmm. the Make yeah. that another movie. You had two, like, make Green Lantern, like, Green Lantern at heart is like a pulpy, a pulpy superhero. Mm-hmm. Make the first one a, par- a pulpy Earth movie. Then introduce his Cosmo, the fact that he's like mm-hmm. he's not that special. He's one of thirty six hundred, and Sinestro is training him because because he, he the Guardians hate him, and that's how they can start their friendship, right? And then you mm-hmm. make them friends, and then you have Sinestro secretly try to overthrow the Guardians because of his sense of order, yeah. and try to re- like, you could have done a like you could have taken that um I put that. Cluster, right? All right. Yeah. Of, of information. Yeah. You could have broken it up. And but here's the question: Does that mm-hmm. movie exist now? With what Ryan Reynolds did at the end of Deadpool two. Um, I have to say yes because I don't. Think that, <laughs> I don't. I don't. Yeah. Oh, it's a branch reality, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't feel like. Yeah, I, 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 I feel. I understand Ryan's pain. Because I actually, I, I here's the thing. I think he really wanted to do a really good Green Lantern movie. I think so too. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. It just you could tell you could tell after about thirty minutes into the movie that mm. it wasn't the worst thing. I will no. say that it wasn't the worst thing, but it could have. I it disappointed me because it could have been so much better if they had yep. just let the material breathe. You know what got me though was mm-hmm. I did a recent rewatch of that movie. I did not realize that was Taika Waititi. Yes. In that movie, I'm going. Wait, wait. The rock guy from Thor Ragnarok is here. <laughs> Korg. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going. That's amazing. I I didn't know who he was at the time. No, that was that was his break, man. That was one of yeah. his like breaks into the into it. And he yeah. and he interviewed and he directed Thor too, which I thought was yeah. like I like. I, I, I really dug that door. I have to say, oh, I, really, really dug, I, dug, I dug that. Like that, I will never do Avengers ever again. Like I remember by that yeah. enemy, I, I will never watch 19 movies of any mm. universe ever again. Mar- as far as I'm concerned, Marvel will never catch, t- take me out to another Avengers movie. They don't care mm. enough. I'm never doing that again. I'll yeah. still watch Marvel movies, but I'll pick the franchises I like. Right. right, and that's and that's it. It's all I'm gonna do because I don't really want to invest in that big Uber story, right? right? But you might I, you might miss part of the story plots, but I don't. Yeah, I, I this I this because here's the thing: you could not get a a first time viewer to watch any of those Avengers movies. Mm. I thought maybe the first one, you couldn't yeah. do it. You couldn't do it. 
um, they would they'd be so lost with what's going on. And I think as it, I, and I'm going to give them a ton of credit to get dot all of those stars to align just right to get to create that moment mm -hmm. was incredible. Um, and Endgame is probably just from everything I watched in in the Marvel U. It was the perfect swan song to that era of, of Marvel. It was definitely beautiful. Uh, Thor scene with his mother is one of the most powerful oh. things. Yeah, it made me cry. Actually, it made when, me actually cry, and I didn't think yeah. I did not expect that. Right, I did not expect that. It was it was Thor dealing with his failures and talking yeah. to the one person he needed to the most that could understand him, mm -hmm. which was his mom. It was such a cool thing, and then and then that he got the hammer. I'm yeah, still worthy. And I was still like, worthy. oh my god, yeah. like that. He needed that so much. He got it. Like yeah. again, I, I'm a big fan of, of the Thor friend. Well, I'm a fan of Thor Ragnarok and the first Thor movie. Dark World, not not, not so much. But the, 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 but see, Endgame made me care about the Dark World a little bit more. A little bit, a little, a little more. bit more, a little bit more. Uh, Renee, Renee, again, credit to Renee Russo for coming back for yeah. that. That was that was great. Um, yeah. I think, I think, um, but uh, I'm curious what they do when, when uh, Jane becomes Thor in the next one because that's going to oh, be yeah, yeah. Um, I, Christian I, I Bale mean, as the villain could be good. Could be really yeah. good, actually. Could be really, really good. Um, but that I'm looking forward to. Guardians three, I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Um, but uh, like I said, that end game, like end game, was perfect. Cap got the ending he deserved. That is yes. the best ending for Captain America I've seen in comics. Anything, yep. it's perfect. It's the right yep. end for that character. And Iron Man, I mean, the only character I, I thought yeah. that got a little shafted was Black Widow. That right? It's yeah. the only one, It's and, and honestly, in a way, not really. It was still kind of apropos that she went that way. Right, because she's always sacrifice, right? Not just the sacrifice, but the fact that it was in the shadows. Mm. She always she was the spy. She was the one. She yeah. never was the took one. Took credit. That, yeah, that took credit. She was just did her thing. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and poor Cliff. That was that was yeah. that that was brutal. That was brutal. Yeah. But, but when Endgame was, started and his family dusted, I was sitting in the theater and I just started tearing up. I was like, man, if you actually were in his shoes, and all it, of a sudden right. they are no, gone, it, it, and you it, have it, no it idea what's happened. No, it, it would wreck you. It would wreck you beyond belief. It wrecked him yeah. beyond belief, and yeah. that's him. Like you, I mean, it, it was that that movie was perfectly dealt with grief so yeah. well, but also all those characters got got a bit of a swan song, a beautiful mm -hmm. like swan song to all like all of them. Tony talking to his dad. Yeah. was such a, again, they gave these little moments to everybody. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, th I thought the one, that, the one, so my favorite cat moment was the elevator going hell hydra. It's like, okay, that was cool. That was so <laughs> yeah. cool. I that was did awesome. That. That was, didn't I have did to do that. anything. Right. But Tony was his dad, Thor was his mom and cat finally getting like his happy ending. Yeah. Like, those three characters, after everything, like you kind of felt after everything they went through, got like those really, really, really cool, amazing moments. And the other thing I really like about that movie is Thanos actually got killed twice. Yeah, right. Which is, which is fantastic. Yeah. I did hear that Marvel apparently is announcing a solo Hulk movie. So hopefully we're going to get more of actual, like, tough Hulk. I, 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 the I next one? Just Mark Ruffalo can't do interviews. Just can't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can't do interviews. That guy yeah. is, is is a walking spoiler. He needs but to turn his phone off when he goes into theaters too. <laughs> that one I felt really bad. That, that one, that one. Oh, I, I know. So bad for him because that that one was <laughs> that one was just like the universe was laughing at him, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The universe was laughing like, at him there. Sorry, not sorry. It was, like. <laughs> No, because because honestly, at at that point, it's just like you go to some interviews and you just watch their reaction. Like, oh crap, why did you say that? Yeah, one of them was just so unbelievable when he said, and actually, he got away with it, even though yeah. everybody else, everybody else reacts like, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? Because that was when he said, yeah, basically everybody dies. 
Why? Well, no, half the universe. Or, he actually says like he kills half the universe. I'm like, yeah. I I I knew like I knew that was coming pretty much from the first Avengers movie that you right. couldn't get the gauntlet. I knew that was coming. Right. But uh, but it was like, well, yeah, I, I could understand the actress going like, "What are you doing, dude? Shut up!" Yeah, he probably yeah. had to pay a fine to Marvel for that. Mar- what does Marvel do with him with the palm? Because that's one of those, that's one of those ones where you yeah. just like, yeah, just go. Yeah, I really uh, want to be mad. At, I, no, it's like this. I really want to be mad at you. At the same time, this is hilarious. Yeah, I don't. Really do. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Like you're an idiot, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to do my own version, kind of, of Endgame with my own characters and the superhero stories that I wrote, because I have it that they come across different, uh, like myths, legends, things like that. Bigfoot, Mothman, Loch Ness monster, things like that. And uh, in the final book. Some of them come back in interesting ways. Hmm. So, who's your favorite superhero? Oh, I already gave you mine. So I gave you mine. So I know it's a popular one, but Spider-Man. He's a good choice. He's a great choice, actually. I actually, you know, with the newer Spider-Man movies and Tom Holland, in the first movie he did for Spider-Man, his own solo film. When he had that building on top of him and he was literally crying out for help, that's what sealed the deal for me. Mm. Like here's a vulnerable teenager who's still trying to figure things out and he just literally had a building dropped on him. Mm -hmm. And he's crying out for help. That choked me up in the theater. I'm going, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. I liked Andrew Garfield. I, I liked parts of the Tobey Maguire movies, Doc Ock especially. But yeah, Tom Holland, I just, for some reason, I, I connect more with his performances. Maguire, I only like the second Spider-Man. Yeah, me too. That, one, that, that one's the best one. Um, yeah. The third one, I have to admit, him and the Black... There was too movie, much. No, 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 there's too much stuff in that movie. But I have to admit, my favorite, my favorite thing in that movie with him was him being a douche when he was wearing a boxer. <laughs> uh, so I have to, I, mean, I, I have to, yeah, no, just, just, just that whole thing. I was just like, because he was panning it up and you could tell because yeah. he was the oh, yeah. thing ever. But it fit what he was doing, right? Yeah. Perfectly. And I thought that was, that was, that was great. I, I, um, I thought that, um, I'm going to put this, uh, I thought that, that was fine, but the only Tobey Maguire one I like is the second one. The the Andrew Garfield, I liked the first movie, although it was oh, the first movie was great. Yeah, second movie, the Gwen thing was interesting, but I mean, Too if much I did, yeah, Fox screws it up. Yeah. I mean, look, 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 look at X Men, and then, and then yeah. don't look at it. don't don't look at X Men. That's actually not. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> is um, this canon? Is that not canon? I, I, I don't I don't I, I, I no like like I said there's only yeah. one Holland movie there's only yeah only the, the yeah yeah um, yeah true um but going down to you, the reason I'm asking that is like I said you, you mentioned your, your your books your heroes and stuff like that so I'm very curious like what so great power great responsibility then is is a, is I would imagine then is a big part of kind of how you construct your own heroes well that's just it like I said earlier the Biggest line of the first book, like I said, is doesn't matter how many people you save, if you defeat the villain, if you have the ability to help someone else, do it no matter the sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's always been, are you going to be there for the little guy? Are you going to help the little guy? Or are you going to say, you know, see someone hanging on, about to fall through a bridge and walk over them? Mm-hmm. Be like, Hey, not my problem. Mm-hmm. Basically, what kind of what kind of person, what kind of hero are you going to be? And anyone can be that person. Mm-hmm. It's just what choice are you going to make, and are you going to be selfish? So here's an interesting thing. I, I'm going to ask this of both in real life and yeah. in your stories. So we all think we're the heroes in our story. 
we all do it. I mean, most of the time. And then every once in a while, we come face to face in the fact that we're not so heroic after all. One yeah. of the things I've had to learn as when I was a little younger was that I could be the villain sometimes. And oh. even sometimes that might even be the right thing to do, right? Sometimes, not saying all the time, but like, for example, you have kids, guess what? You have to be a little bit of a tyrant, a little bit of mm. a villain, or they run you over. That's just, right. <laughs> right? Being a bad guy can be a good thing sometimes. There's a difference like, in p- between being mean and being disciplining though. No, no. The, the intention, but, the intent, the, the intentions are very, are very different, right? The intention yeah. and, 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 yeah, even, true. right. But, but it's the same, it's the same part of you. Like, like we yeah. all, we, like, like we all, as I've gotten older, I've realized that there are like my flaws help make me me. Mm. Right now I can yep. change some of them for sure. But I'm not going to be able to change all of them. In fact, maybe mm. I shouldn't either. So we we, we love we look we have a, a cooking example of this. One of my favorite newest things in the universe: sea salt. Mm. Sea salt is so neat because if you, if you take iodized salt and you take sea salt, you put it on the table. From a distance, they look like the exact same thing. Take a microscope. It's so different. They're so completely different. Yeah. Ironically, ironically enough. Sea salt's the healthier of the two by far. Ironically, it's because of those very flaws in the salt. Right. Right? Yeah. It right, hasn't right. been processed. It hasn't been processed, but also those little black beds. We don't we have flaws in ourselves. We have, we're we're mm-hmm. not we're not perfect. We're just we're not built to have this perfect system. We have a right. system that changes, which is very cool. So you need an imperfect thing to help balance an imperfect system. Mm. Sea salt's imperfect. Little black flecks, they're different shapes, sizes, they're misshapen, but they absorb better than the perfectly pristine, like iodized salt. Physically, I'm a little misshapen too. That's right. Too much effort. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's pizza. <laughs> well, pizza is, 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 is actually, that is the one thing I never expected, but we're not going to go into like the, the, the disease of the apocalypse stuff. I never thought pizza would do the food of the apocalypse, but it's so mm. it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It has to be homemade though. That's the best. That is the best. You're always the best. Yeah. I get to do homemade stuff again soon. I'm so, so yeah. happy. Um, but, but going back to what I was saying about your books, realizing that me personally that I can be the villain mm. and that sometimes it's the right thing to do when you write your characters that are heroes, do you there's two parts one when they choose the villainous path is it always like do you think about are they doing it for the right reasons and when do they then when does it go wrong because i i i i honestly think that sometimes no one sets out to become a villain i think Mm -hmm. but i do think it's like anything else there's a momentum process to it there comes a point where you just hit yeah what happened in their past that made them decide to do what they do right well well, that and also i think there's also like a plan of return like you can forgive someone for stealing food to feed their family you can totally forgive it you understand it at the very least but there comes a point where you don't have to do that anymore Mm -hmm. and once you hit that point and you still steal anyway when did that line get irreversible when did you cross that line you couldn't go back anymore Mm -hmm. That yeah. to me, that to me is always an interesting thing about a villain. Yeah, I I've always been a fan of redemption arcs too, mm-hmm. is because we're all capable of it. I actually had readers of mine not enjoy a sort of redemption I did for a character because they thought that he was always going to be bad. But at the same time, I I wanted to show my readers that you know. Forgiveness needs to be a little more prevalent mm-hmm. for society because we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to do horrible things, but are you always going to judge that person on their past? 100% fuck up right here. I've done many mm-hmm. mistakes in this life. So it's not all of them I'm proud of, but I needed to make those mistakes to become who I am today. I didn't. Yeah, same I didn't, here. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that's human. 
I think it's a very human thing. My favorite kind of heroes, I, 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 there's a reason that, oh, I, I guess I gotta go down this path. My favorite kind of heroes usually are very human people that make honest mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's very easy though, I think, especially with a superhero genre, to keep them maybe a little squeaky, like, like the Superman syndrome. He's always going to mm -hmm. be a good guy. Now, yeah. Superman, now, now here's the thing. There are workarounds with that. With Superman, you just make him fun. You can actually make Superman mm -hmm. surprisingly very fun if you really want to, mm -hmm. right? It's just, it takes a little imagination. He's not like Batman where you can put Batman in anything and go, I'm Batman, and it works, yes. right? You gotta actually work a little bit with Superman, but you can make him fun, mm -hmm. right? But for most here, but, but I think what I think where we are with today, um, we like our heroes with flaws, but we also like our heroes with like obviously thick qualities we root for. So, yeah. what what's easier for you, the qualities to root for or the flaws? I have fun with both. <laughs> I have to say, I have fun with both because I originally wrote these books when I was fourteen. Ooh. like the age of 14 to 17, 18. And then it wasn't until 2016 when I realized, you know what? I want to publish to Amazon. I want to get these actually out there for people to enjoy. And I rewrote every character. I rewrote a lot from those books. And I had the whole trilogy at that point. And I found by the end of the trilogy, and I even added six short stories of those monsters and legends and things like that, by the end of the third and final book, it was not the same story at all. No. At all. I mean, obviously, there's things when you're 14 that you write about that you had no idea about. But now, I look at it now, and I'm going, you know what? It was good at the time when I first wrote it, because that was the way I saw the world. Now, I mean, it. I love it even more now. See... I don't know if I can do that. So uh, one of my favorite, like, have you ever read Terry Pratchett? Uh, a little bit. Okay. He did a book called The Carpet People a long time ago. It's a, mm. it, now, it's actually written by two Terry Pratchetts. Terry mm. Pratchett in his 50s and Terry Pratchett okay. at 12. Mm. It's not quite a typical Terry Pratchett book as we know it today. It's not Granny mm. Weatherwax, it's not The Night Watch, it's not Death, it's not any of those things. It's what it is him working on young terry's book hmm. he said the biggest challenge with it was it was young terry's book and that even though i'm a better writer now i can't duplicate that voice with the same passion terry did I agree with that because yeah. there's still nuances to my books that are definitely still the 14 year old me. And I actually kind of wanted to keep some of that because a lot of that was, you know, when you're 14 years old and you're say going to see a superhero movie, you have that awe, you have that wonder. And I really wanted to keep that. Like I've had readers say after reading the first few chapters of my book going, wait, this one character can transform into a shark or anything he wants to. Like, I want to be able to do that. <laughs> I'm going, oh, great. I, I'm happy you enjoyed that part. <laughs> but but it's also just, you can't go to that place anymore either. That no. was something he, that was his voice, his time, yeah. that was who you are then. You're not that person anymore. So that's a really, that's a really hard, I can write better now than I did at 14. Right, right. <laughs> yes, but, thank you. Yeah, well, I, I'd be very worried that I didn't evolve from where I was at fourteen. I mean, that'd be that'd be <laughs> terrifying. But yeah. um, but there are things fourteen year old me did very well that I can't do now to say like like I would have then because I don't see the world the same way. Hmm. Right, the world the world is very much the world is very much uh, my voice has evolved. I have mm -hmm. levels to it. It's easier to me to write a new novel than to go back to an older novel and try mm -hmm. to rebuild it. Because even though I could make it technically maybe better, I don't know if I could personally pull off that voice anymore because I'm not that guy. Yeah. I was that guy. There are things I remember about that guy. Mm -hmm. And there are things about that guy that has carried over into the guy that you're currently talking to. But there's... 
but that's a, that's a hard thing to do, man. That's a really hard thing to do. It's also why the five-year-old stick figure is actually so hard to duplicate when you draw it. Yeah. You can't yeah. match that enthusiasm. Like, I, I, honest to God, you, you can't. It is one of the hardest things to do. Mm -hmm. so. I, I found, though, doing the rewrite, it really lacked emotion. Mm -hmm. And I found with all the things I've been through in my life, being able to add that to my books, what they are now, like, I would probably say three or four times writing the final book to the series, I had to sit there and sob. <laughs> just with certain parts of it, I just, like my wife would be looking at me and she'd just kind of, you know, sit in her corner because she's not as emotional as I am. But I would be sitting there sobbing, just going, like even just reading her a scene. And I couldn't get through it just reading her the scene because of what was happening. And it just, I appreciate that I could do that now though. Cause the 14 year old me didn't have that. No. So let's see. All right. That when I got to the end of my first series, um, my character, one of my characters told me, you, you have to kill me. I, I have to go here. It's not, I'm not supposed to go past this point. Mm -hmm. If nothing happens to me now, nothing's going to happen to them later. I have to go now. Hmm. And I was really sad because actually it was my favorite character in the series. Too. Right. I really, really enjoyed writing them. And it was like, okay. So it was right. I was hmm. like, but there was a moment when I wrote it that her last <laughs> Waterfalls. There was, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Because it was like, yeah. I had, Don't I had that character. Go chasing waterfalls. I can keep going, but yeah, I think that is kind of a very different thing. And, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, and karaoke night, Josh Joshing has done. Heck yeah. Yeah. Karaoke guy. Ah. So I. Beatles really, music. That's my go to. You read it, Beatles? I can do Lincoln mm -hmm. Park. I can do rap stuff, okay? If nice. I tried singing, I, 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 I destroyed it. I, I killed the Naris with that. By killing it, I mean, it died. It died on air. Nah, nah. No, no, it died. No, I'm, I'm not, like, I, I, I'm not embellishing this very much, actually. I, like, I made the mistake. I made the mistake. So 20 years ago, I could do Falling in Love is Hard on the Knees. It's from an album mm. called Nine Lives. I could do it. Okay. Also, maybe a little drunk when I did it. Maybe. This is just maybe. <laughs> and so me 20 years later didn't really remember the, that part of that equation now. So I go up there to sing it, and I realized that I can't even sing what I, what I did 20 years ago because I'd done it in so long. Oh. So it literally, I, I, I literally posted on Facebook that, that night, that night, to you Aerosmith fans out there, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You may not know the context, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I did karaoke. No, I actually said yeah, I did karaoke at CanCon. To the Aerosmith yeah. fans out there, I am so sorry. And that's it. I didn't mm. say what the song was, mm. but it, the laughter I got from some of my friends was like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh. If I ever, if I ever win another Aurora, though, I know this: when I go on stage, I'll be, I'll have to wear a tutu. Thanks to Pat Flowing. <laughs> So if, I another, it's, so if if Sarcastica, if Sarcastica basically, I made a deal with her one year. I almost won it. I was I was in the nomination for my second year in a row. And she goes, mm. "If you win, you gotta wear a tutu." It's like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> I didn't awesome. put time. I didn't. I didn't put time on the year though. No. And I've been nominated. So I've been nominated three times. I've won it once. If I ever get nominated again, and and go to a fourth a fourth time, and I win. I got it, it, it. I got a word too, too. And I can guarantee you that I'll be on like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, possibly. Yeah, I'll I'll need some like picture proof of that. I think again, and it'll be shared everywhere. I yeah. know. I was like, hey, oh, look yeah. what Josh did last night. And I'll be like, yeah. yeah. You you'll be the new uh, Bernie Sanders thing, just put in different pictures with you and a tutu. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I'd be so. No. Oh my god, oh my god, Mr. Derek, I think. Mr. Josh, I think we have an interview here. I, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave with a, 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 I think a touch of advice for your 
filming, of cooking, filming, and writing. Combine them, sir. Because, again... I'm already kind of putting them... I'm, I'm slowly getting better with my newsletters. Yeah. And I'm actually putting in my newsletters what's my current writing fuel, and I'll plug my videos into that. So yeah. if they want to watch them, great. I, but I, 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 bring this, I bring this up because... Again, when you talked about your cooking stuff, you let up. Hmm. If you figure out a way, again, bottle that with your yeah. book promotion. Because if you figure you figure out the way to get that same result, because if you do, if you do, you will find, I think, in your case, you will find more book sales. You're hmm. a likable, you're a likable guy, you're an amazing like I said, I've already built you up earlier in the show. Anyone just oh. right? Yeah. He's like, he's like, <laughs> like yeah. But he, but the thing is, show that joy and that enthusiasm. When there are two things I know for sure about advertising, okay? People like it when people are genuinely joyful, happy, and authentic, and people like it when you're having fun because it encourages them to mm. have fun too. You have fun with your cooking videos. Figure out that formula for your writing stuff. Yeah. A yeah. lot of it really is faking it till you make it. I don't think you fake it, but see, here's the you don't thing. You think so? Well, it's interesting, think... though. Like, people will ask me now, like, what do you suggest I, I do with this? And, or should I make yeah. this? Or I made this. What do you think of it? Meanwhile, I'm, I'm like, I'm just learning how to cook. I actually had to put in one of my videos that, honestly, I'm learning from my wife. I am not a professional chef by any means. I didn't go for any schooling or anything. Yeah. It's just, I'm learning from my wife. I'm using the products I have that I have available but, to me. And, but, but, okay. So let me, let me flip that on you just, just slightly. Cause I don't think really, you really baked it. You put yourself out there. And the thing is you put, you, very much you, so. you, you, you put yourself out there. And yeah. again, it's not that it's not about, it's not about your knowledge. It's not really even about your talent. It's about your attitude, mm. right? I don't think you fake your attitude. That's a lot of truth. Right, right, mm. right. It's your attitude. I don't think you fake your attitude when you cook. You might not know everything, but you don't want, like, if I want to learn something, I can learn something, right? There's, especially today, there is nothing on this planet I can't learn how to do. If I really mm. want to, I will find a way to learn how to do it. Yep. The information is literally at my fingertips. What I love, and this is, I love this as a freelancer, I love this as a, as a writer, I love this as a, as a podcaster. I love authentic, enthusiastic people that love what they do. Because mm. that's who I want to learn from. I don't mm -hmm. want to learn from the guy that knows everything, but is like you guys stick up his at or her ass about how to do it. I don't want to do that. If, I mean, I, if I absolutely must deal with them, I will. But mm. I will literally trade that for like lint. I'm not kidding. Like I will trade that for lint in a heartbeat. Because I would again, knowledge is readily available. Mm -hmm. Experiences are not. That is what we offer. And you, my friend, and this is where I, 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 I think that's why I'm going to bounce the fake it till you make a thing back at you. I don't think you fake it. What I think is you enjoy it. And when you enjoy it, you encourage others to play with you. And that's the thing I, I hope so. How, well, you're having people come ask you about stuff, right? Yeah. What, where, sure. where do you think that comes yeah. from? That comes from that enthusiasm. It's not your knowledge base. You've already said that yourself. You don't have it, or you're not, or you're learning as you're going. It's yeah, not, there's still a lot to learn. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So it's not your knowledge base. Now, it might be somewhat your talent. You're good at what you do. Are you? Or at least your your wife's a hell of a teacher. One of the might, there might be a combination. Oh, she's a great teacher. Yeah, or yeah, 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 might be a combination of both there, right? So talent might be there. You're you're well taught. That that's great. That that's too. But I don't, I, I don't underestimate your attitude when you're on there doing what you do. No. That is what draws people in. That is what you got to care. And, that, that, and, that's, and that's why I'm, I'm giving you this. Because I saw it immediately. 
I want to watch a cooking video now. And I'm probably going to watch a cooking video now because I want to see what makes you so awesome. And maybe I'll go buy some of the uh, a balsamic, uh, balsamic vinegar yeah. and olive oil. So hey, I'm I'll set you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that, that sounds like a plan. We'll, we'll figure something out. But I, it was all your attitude. Honest yeah. to God, that, that's what made me curious. So the thing that surprised me the most with this, though, is I've actually had chefs walk in. And even so for our supplier of oil and balsamic, one of the daughters is like she went to school to be a chef and she actually messages me telling me, I love your show. <laughs> yeah. And to even get that from professional chefs just kind of goes, oh, really? <laughs> cool, right? It's cool, it is right? cool. But yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm that's why I'm bringing this up to you. Because I, I, I appreciate it, I, that. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm bringing this up to you because you, you, you've stumbled onto something really good, and I can tell you without seeing it, that's really good just on your reaction. Hmm. Um, I interviewed. She's she's now almost 19 years old now, a, a pop singer. She's hmm. about to release a song I heard a year ago on my show, and what the reason hmm. I wanted that song, the reason I actually wanted that song, she was dancing to her own song. But she was really into it. Like uh -huh. you could actually see how much she loved the work she did. Mm -hmm. And I was, how do I, how do I put this? That sold me. Like I, mm -hmm. not nothing about like she talked about sold me. She was dancing to her own stuff. She, she was proud of the work she made, and that made me want to see it more. And I got that from you. You were talking about yourself. Mm -hmm. You're trying to Barbara Walters me, aren't you? Yes. Make me cry. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to make you cry. I'm just, I'm just, no, I, no, I, 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 I appreciate I'm it. Cry. I, I just want you to realize what you've stumbled onto. Mm -hmm. And I, I, right, that's what I want you to realize. It is fun. It, yeah. re it really is fun. So, yeah. So that's that. Again, I'm, I'm through with the preachy, preachy stuff. I, I think, I've, I think I've, I've done that enough. All of which to say is you're doing a lot of good things. And I've enjoyed having you on the show, and I hope you've enjoyed being here. Well, I appreciate you having me on here. Yeah. It has been fun. Yeah. I was going to say, we didn't say you enjoyed it. Oh, but <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. uh, So how about, so Dutch Dinosaur book coming out in August. We'll, 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 so how do you want to do this? Do you want to do cooking show, your book coming up, where people find you, or do you want to do book cooking show and where people find you uh so my next book it's called dino rift yeah i haven't released the covered yet but uh it is coming out august 3rd i actually haven't made that public yet either but hey surprise Come on! um <laughs> uh other than that my cooking show you can find it on youtube um it so the business i work for it's called the olive oil co you'll see a little black logo pop up uh, we're based in Brantford, Ontario. Um, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, over 50 videos now. It's uh, We cover a little bit of everything from desserts to meats to vegan stuff, um, even breakfast stuff. Kind of try to cover the whole spectrum. Um, and yeah, you can find me on Facebook, Amazon. I'm slowly becoming more wide with my books. Again, it's one of those things where I have to face my fear and make the jump. Uh, I'm doing the same. Yeah. Thing. I'm doing the same thing with my next release. I think my next yeah. release is going to be still Amazon exclusive, but the first book is going to be. It's going to be nice. double. I I, I like, wish I had done that with my first book. Well, no, I I I I just I realized like like for me personally, like last year was great. Like in terms, of, like I, I went a whole year as a freelancer just to mm -hmm. just to do, I think. Every author owes it to themselves. Every writer owes themselves to kind of see what they can do on their own. And I've done a lot of cool things. I might even like, like I got some really cool stuff coming up that I'm really happy about. And I'm hoping to hear more of in, in the near future on some things. Mm. But, uh, and I've definitely been paid for writing, which is a great thing. But looking at in terms, I went back to a day job so I could invest my, in myself more so I can go back on my own again. Because I don't see myself as an employee anymore. I just, I just hmm. don't. I will. I don't think I ever will again. Um, 
I am a mercenary the whole way through now. But yeah. um, but that all said, um, one of the reasons I stayed in just Amazon exclusive was because I didn't have the real means to fully properly invest in myself. Same here. Yeah, right. To go yeah. wide, and, and and now I did. Now I can, and mm. it's not going to be the first thing I do, but I know it. I'm planning in August to slowly make that jump because I need. I again, we where you need to. Amazon is 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 a part. I think part of everybody's strategy, but the thing is, it can't be the whole strategy. Either. No, no. I've I've slowly been learning that. Yeah. So. So, so you're going wide. We'll see what happens with the Kindle Vela, though. I'm 50-50. It's I, interesting. Like, like, yeah, it's it, it's. I'm 50-50 on that. Um, we'll see. You just got to make sure you that. always have content to put out because it's serialized, right? Yeah. So Japanese light novels have a concept like in in Japan they have a they have a concept like that that works where people do a, like a serial series regularly. Hmm. And it, and it can lead to some really lucrative things. The question I really have with Amazon is how lucrative are they willing to make it for an author? Yeah, that there. is the question. That's, that's the I think question. it is a, from what I was reading, I think it, it's a 50-50, right? They get 50, you get 50%? Yeah, but, but like I said, because in Japan, it, what would end up happening is a lot of really successful ones got signed. That's like really right. wheels. Right. So, I mean... Kudos to them. We'll see. We'll we'll see how that yeah. goes. Kudos to them. Maybe I'll come up with something really crazy or silly. Like like maybe I'll, I'll write about a jar yeah. of dirt. Even for the jar of dirt. <laughs> Brian Regan is. fan? Are you a Brian Regan fan? I, I am not. No, I'm not a Brian Regan fan. I'm a Tom Holt fan, Amy Martinez fan, um, huh. and uh, and oddly enough, I feel this. Although he's he's more serious generally, I feel he ties into like my level of zany, Michael Moore. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, Brian Regan has a bit on Jar of Dirt. Nice so, comedy I stuff. Yeah, yeah, comedy is great. That's another. That's another. That's another. So, would you like to come back in August when the book's out? I'd love to. Yeah, when the book's out, come to. back in August. Yeah. We'll talk I'll be a ball of nerves because I'm nervous for reception. But hey, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I, I'll, I'll butter you up some more. See if I can turn you red. Yeah, right. into frat, into and red. honestly, you're one of the kindest interviewers. I've had. Really? Yeah. 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 Very kind to me. I, I appreciate it. Well, uh, again, I'm here to help build you. you you're, you're up there with spilled ink. Better. Spilling ink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tell Katie that. <laughs> I, I, so, I actually, actually, in truth, in truth, um, I have huge respect for Katie. The case light is. Yeah. is Probably one they're all fantastic years. people. They they are no, they are all so Jen. Katie, Jen's, Jen's yeah. a bad Jen's a badass. I'm interviewing her. <laughs> she's just Ooh. such a cool. She's a cool badass. Um, I, yeah. I I met her last year. She was so so cool. Um, mm. Jay is interesting. Um, I haven't. I love Jay. Jay no Jay is a sweetie. Like y'all, when you get right down to it, he's he is a gentle gentle soul. Yeah, but. What's interesting about him is I have not interviewed him on my show since he went from Jason to Jay, and I haven't okay. seen him on there very much. Yeah. Since he's he's gone, through, he's been going through this transformation. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, as a friend, I'm curious about what he's going through, but I also kind of realize he's kind of still figuring his own stuff out right now, and so yeah. I'm just, I'm giving him a wider before I. I want to talk to him more about that, but I also know that right now might not be the time for that. Maybe. Right? So. Maybe. No, but, he's a great guy, though. He's always so asking. Is. Yeah, every time they have me on the show, he's always asking, so what are we doing for a singing parody to open the show with? <laughs> oh, no. The, 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 actually, I, I the thing about him, I think they like to talk about things that the people underestimate about him. He has so much life in him like when he mm. lets him like when he lets his guard and he just goes yeah. he is an incredible human being like, i honestly yeah. think i honestly think that um the only person who sometimes doesn't just see how amazing he is is sometimes himself i i, I think he forgets oh jay's a great no. guy 
he, he is yeah. a great guy. Like he really, really is. I, I just like, I haven't talked to him very much, AF Stewart, and, and, and because I haven't really talked to him very much since, since he's been going through it, I haven't. I'm not quite sure if there's the right time to ask him or not. And that's mm-hmm. kind of why I've, I've kind of held back on it. I've had Katie on the show. I'm ha- I, Jen's coming on the show, and I, I like, I love all three of them. I really, really, really do. I, I just, I just feel like um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure Jay would be ready for an interview on the sh- uh, on the show with me at this moment. I'm not sure. So. You know who I miss on Spilling Ink though is David Jones. Yes, he hasn't been on in so long, and I miss him. He, I, I always enjoyed watching him. Gentle dude, very gentle yeah. guy. I, I actually, the thing was, I think he was the gentle soul before of them. He, mm-hmm. he, uh, um, ultra talented. Like, like the stuff he's working. Oh, I've been following him better. with his yeah. uh, his whole game yeah. board game. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I know he's so ultra talented. It's incredible. Um, I, I think in his, he reminds me. Have you ever uh, met Brent Nichols? No. Okay, so Brent, Brent's this really quiet. He's this uber talented dude that just quietly works in his own little wing of the universe, and, and mm. he's uber successful at what he does. And he's got quietly all this other stuff going on. Like like Dave and him are almost like they're similar kinds of people. Okay. They just quietly make beautiful things, and I, it's it just sometimes you just have to look and go, "Holy crap!" And I think they just get. I just I just I just I just think that um, I just think Dave would rather make beautiful things than talk. That's mm-hmm. that's that's that that's the impression I've always gotten with him. Yeah. He's not against doing the show, but if you I, I think if you had to put if you go you can only do one thing, Dave. Shoes. He's like, <laughs> yeah. That's just who he is. Katie. Katie is in it. I love her passion. That's mm-hmm. the show. That's secret, secretly. That's her show. That will always be her show for as long as she wants it. Uh, yeah. Jen is. Jen, I think, is, is such is such a good. Uh, I love Jen and Jay together because they balance each other yeah. out so well. Jay brings out a little bit more of her personality, and she yeah. calms him down. Which I actually you know, every with. time I've been on the show, I've never been on with Jen. Really? I have not. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. So, but so. You got, you got, you got one day. Talk. Yeah. One day. One day you will. And that'll, and that'll be cool. And then maybe you can get Jen to, be, to, a par- to join you guys in their symphony and do a parody. There we go. There you go. And then we'll yeah. have you on there and we can do an Aerosmith song. That's right. We can do, we can like, <laughs> I, like I will kill it. I will literally uh, will die. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, just pick. How would we do the army? I don't want to miss a thing. I can't. I can't hit the oh. hot to save my life. But we'll, we'll love that song. We'll decimate yeah. it. Like, oh, yeah. we will ruin it to oblivion. Yeah, right? we should. Just, right. We just need to have a spilling ink for, uh, episode where it's just all singing the whole episode. We should probably make that happen. Good. You know, you know get Brian Tan have, on there. You no, know, so so you get you get Brian, you get Joe. Right, you get Joe, you get, yeah. you get and we all just do like a half like a singing yeah. yeah, we just do a singing talent happy hour. Yeah. Um, hey I have Stewart, would you judge it? Would you judge <laughs> that show? We would need a judge. Or would you yeah. just rather sing? It's probably just four. Hey, the more singers the merrier. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So but uh wow. So how about before, before we go completely off the rails yet again? Um <laughs> So what? So what? So do you have like the link to your YouTube channel? Yeah, I can. Uh, do you want me to pop it in here or are you yeah, post pop, it somewhere pop, else? Pop it, pop it in Facebook and give it to and, and give it. And I'll copy it and I'll send it on my Twitch as well. So that way it can be in both yeah. spots. Perfect. Right. Um, outside of that, um, well, guys, this is this has been my episode. Nobody wants to hear you. <laughs> no, 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 Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. We can all sing just in different keys. That's right, at different pitches. I sing like a bagpipe, not well played. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> bagpipe is a beautiful uh, instrument when it's played well. It is a beautiful, true. beautiful instrument. But the that's journey true. to becoming a beautiful instrument to play is long, arduous, and there's a lot of pain involved. Mainly practice, 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 practice. Mainly for the people around you having to listen to you do it. <laughs> right. How's it going? Here's some earplugs. <laughs> <Just>, no. <laughs> <laughs>
it, 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 it's it's the it's the it's the dissonance like because it, because again it, it's such a fragile instrument it's such a delicate instrument that no. you hit the right just hit it the wrong way it's like all of a sudden it's like Ugh. yeah oh, what, what happened it's like why are you trembling because i heard it <laughs> trembling <laughs> trembling <laughs> I, yeah. I I like that. Honestly, I love good bagpipes. Not yeah. when they're played, but when they're played. Violins and, and bagpipes have one thing in common. When they're when they're not masters play them, it's beautiful. Yep. When beginners play them, agreed. It it, it you kind of just kind of want to go like this, and just yeah. go. You'll get good someday. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm I'm a terrible I'm a terrible human being. I really really am. But that's okay. You're <laughs> fine. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah, but anyway, this this terrible human being is taking a few days off as he is moving. And the next time you see me, will be in a very cool location, and it's still in Windsor, Ontario. My guest will be Jill Maria Robinson. Um, I want to thank Derek for coming on my show, and thanks to everybody who watched and listened. Uh, Derek's a cool dude. So once again, just say your book right here for people when and when it's really being released. So my next book. Uh, so actually, the box set of my superhero series is coming out uh, in June. Um, August 3rd is the release of Dino Rift, though. So that's going to be a young adult, uh, teens being thrown into prehistoric times, trying to find their way back. Adventure. Sweet. So you got that. Watch that August 3rd. Get to get 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 his book cassette for all his books. Clear your mouth. And as for me, I'll be back Wednesday next week. In the meantime, guys, if you want to like what you hear or see, hit the hit the like and follow button on Twitch. Hit the like and subscribe button on YouTube as Joshua Cantoloresco. Stay inspired. Keep shining in the dark. And I'll see you guys Wednesday. Shine bright like a diamond. <laughs>